care how much you like Whitney Moore, I'm not Whitney Moore. Whitney Moore will never replace. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're all back. We are we're back all back other. for one week only. One week only. Uh, and then we're all gone. Before. Well, you'll be here by yourself next week. Before it'll be. Yeah, literally just me being like, I wish I had friends to talk. Comics, <laughs> comics if with. It was, was going to be an actually, it could be giant size Wednesday because then it would just be like you would be Cyclops and it would be brand new people. <laughs> oh, that's not a. That's, I like it. But that, I mean. that also implies that we, uh, we're bad for sales. <laughs> Or that you've been kidnapped. Or that we've been, or kidnapped, that we've been kidnapped, and we're on an island that's alive. Which is kind of true. Uh, if you do an X-Men show next week while we're gone, you will not live. You will you that. will not live Try to and see stop another. Try me, desert people. <laughs> Damn it, <laughs> desert dwellers. Uh, welcome to Misfits of Science, where we're going to be talking. Uh, we're going to be talking science book uh, books. Um, science book. Science book. Just one book. Great. Get book science of book. science. Um, <laughs> Get book. Science is in it. So the notion was there was a brief time in Western pop culture where uh, scientists were kind of given the same heroic clout as superheroes and super spies and cowboys and pirates. And there was this notion of like the heroic scientist. Um, it was a very brief time when we had heroes like Doc Savage. Uh, Quatermass from Quatermass in the Pit, which if you don't know, you should totally look up because I don't know. I'm gonna take a really note on dumb. that. What was that one called? He, Quatermass in the Pit. He was a rocket. He's a British rocket scientist uh -huh. who discovers. They bring him in. He's like an older gentleman with a cane. Love and it already. He uh, discovers like an alien craft beneath a, 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 a like a, a mine explodes from the from the war. And they discover an alien craft buried in London, and they go inside it. So it's like called Crater. Quatermass with a Q. Quatermass Quater. the pit. There's been like three or four different versions of it. They've when made... would when does he originate? Um, oh God, there's so many different versions. There's a there's a black and white one. There's a there's a let's see. There's a you know, if I pull it up. Um, 1967. I hope, I hope you were expecting detailed questions before you finished your monologue. I did. Uh, 1967 <laughs> was was uh, the the my favorite version of it, but there's nice. also uh, other versions of the of the character who have popped Excellent. up, including a 90s version with I want to say David Tennant, although I don't think he played quite what? Much, but he was in it. It was weird. I he don't, played the pit. It sounds great, <laughs> but I don't recommend it. Okay. Uh, uh, but and I'm sure someone's remaking it. As I say this, there's someone yep. at the BBC going, Let's dig Quatermass back up. Good God. Yeah, Arkin Astron says, uh, "Blast from the past." He was Doctor Who before Doctor Who. He was Doctor Who before Aww. Doctor Who. Uh, Buckaroo Banzai would be an American version of kind of the, oh. the idea of the heroic scientist. Oh, uh, interesting. So we thought we would uh, share between the three of us some of our favorite books that um, celebrate the notion of intellect and reason as superpowers, and that the notion of these superpowers being something that anyone can strive to achieve, and a great way to. Inspire the, the the youth of today to, to reach for new heights and read cool comics about. Oh, Spartan. I only chose books that will uninspire the youth. I well, I would expect, <laughs> I would expect nothing more. <laughs> if, if I'm anything, it's uh, uninspirational. Uninspirational. Yeah, yeah the, the uninspirational. You're Matt, uninspiration. You're, like, you're, you're, Matt. you're the uninspirational am, Matt Key. Yeah, the uninspirational Matt Key. I'm like, I'm the more you know <laughs> logo, but in reverse. The more you thought. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the the more you huh. Huh. The more you, huh? Bum, 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 Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Yep, that's me. We're a little, we're, we're adorably loopy today. We, we had a late night, too, so. That sounds real bad, Tom. Yeah, that does. It, it, it yeah. was bad. Oh, well, it does that, too. <laughs> We, yeah, for anybody who for anyone see. who was watching Alpha last night, we did a, a one night only, which was a celebration of the show that we did earlier this summer, mm -hmm. Dread, on which we had a great deal oh, of fun. Oh, is it pronounced Dread? Dreed. I've been pronouncing it Dreed. Yeah. Dreed? Yeah, yeah Dreed. That's, uh, that's the German. That's the <laughs> <laughs> I'm loopy because I can't think of anything except being in the desert next week. <laughs> like, it's yeah. kind of like where I'm stuck right now. I understand. So Matt and I are going to Burning Man, which is why we're going to be. Uh, and no, Burning Man didn't destroy the Wednesday Club, as no. uh, someone said in the chat earlier. Yeah, I apologize that I didn't take a note, but uh, no. <laughs> Just for one week. So He acts like they're coming back. Yeah, wait, are we not? I mean. I'm gonna turn it into the X-Men Club. You're not invited. Help you survive the experience. Yep. That's my impression Burning of Amy. Help you survive the experience. <laughs> that's very like, is true. that not how that works? That's actually that's. I think it's literally written on the ticket. Yeah. Uh, so, oh god, I'm trying to find the rest of my notes while you guys banter about it. <laughs> there it is. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be fun. I mean, like, there's a couple different places that we can go to with this, and I thought the for once, like, we didn't all read the same book, so there's mm -hmm. gonna be a lot of like sharing. This yeah. is a potluck kind of episode. This is such this a is potluck very much a potluck, yeah. Um, Which I hope you all will participate in, because this is one of my favorite. Like, I, I, we, 
I'm delighted to say that we could go forever on this topic. We yeah. could mm -hmm. literally go forever. Yeah, the, the more like I like I would read a couple books and prep for today and then be like, oh man, I just don't know how many more. Oh, there's like 70 more. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought like one of one of the the visuals at the uh, one of the visuals at the convention scene that really really struck me in the last couple of years um, was from an image book called Nowhere Men, mm. which was my, my first thing. I'm, I'm sure you you know the book quite well. Uh, and Nowhere Men has this amazing T-shirt that I saw everywhere before I'd even read the book, before I knew anything about the book. Uh, and we may have a picture in there of a girl wearing the T-shirt from the comic. Uh, it might be Nowhere Men 2, if I recall. Mm -hmm. One or two, I can't remember. But there's a... It's the Science is the New Rock and Roll shirt. I totally forgot about this book. You're talking about it. I was like, Nowhere Man. I know. Oh, my God. Science, Science is, is rock, and rock and Roll. roll. Oh, and I like, forgot about this book. Everyone was wearing these shirts at, at Comic-Con over the last couple of years. And I, and I, I bought one myself. Before even ever reading the book, <laughs> um, are you you're a fan of Nowhere Man or? I've read the beginning. I liked it a lot, but I haven't uh, I continued past it. It's it's very Grant Morrison. Um, I don't want to give too. But it's the notion of kind of this collective of of extremely uh, smart people. There were sort of four very smart dudes, and when you meet them, like their sort of idealistic partnership has already fallen apart. Yeah. And you're sort of putting the pieces together of like that they've sort of done this. And what I like is that their metaphor of it being the rock and roll is that like the four of them were sort of productive and together and now there's sort of this like like late Beatles kind of like Very or late post Beatles. Beatles where you're sort of like, What happened? You guys were so good together and yeah, they're like who is your so Yoko? much water under the bridge, you know. Yeah, uh, and they're not talking. They're not working together anymore. And they're all and they're all very like poppy and sort of show up in Time Magazine. And they're all like like setting trends and very fashion uh, fashion forward. And the idea of these rock star, uh, like the idea of a rock star science collective, where something something went horribly wrong and they're not talking to each other anymore, as like where you know where if it, if it was a if it was a band it would have been drugs, women, and poor decisions. Whereas here it was quantum physics. Things that explode in poor decisions, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and that's I'm like, and that was kind of like, for me, that was the, the one of those first moments where I was noticing the sudden shift back to the intellectual hero, which I've been really, I've been really digging. And there's yeah. been a lot, and there's a lot, and I'm sure we're gonna. We could do an entire episode just on comics that feature versions of Tesla. Mm. Yeah. Who's of course the yeah. creator Speaking of, of the Atomic Robo. Hmm? Oh, you did. You brought it. I was gonna bring mine, and it's in storage. Five, um, five fists of science. Matt Fraction. Uh, this was like one of his first books, right? Or find this, um, five fists of science. It's three guys, but one of them has one arm. <laughs> that was a joke. I'm so sorry. That was no, that was my brain going. Wait, that's not really no, it, that's right? Not right? Like, no, I read this book, but it's been a while. <laughs> was, uh, but you're relatively close to Manhattan Project. Join Mr. Mark Twain, Project. aka Samuel Clemens, and Mr. Nikola Tesla, aka the Master of Lightning, in a white knuckle thriller as they save the very world. Not recommended for the soft or the sissy, the weak at heart, or the dull of mind. The five fists of science. Twain, Tesla, America. You cannot expel action adventure without TNT. <laughs> <sighs> this is delightful. At I love your last, voice. Science for the common man. Science for the working man. Science for the everyman. Fear it. Feel it. <laughs> OMG. They're having a lot of fun on the back of this book. Uh, and, and notice okay. we, we talked about two image books already. Can I just mm -hmm. keep reading the back of this? No, no, I, please. Only I've if you... read this but never noticed it. Uh, Science, no longer the realm of the fop, the dandy, or the physicist. Science, no longer the purview of the landed gentry or the moneyed upper classes. Science, Science. Is today. Science is now. <laughs> Science is for you. Come one and come all to this, a grand old adventure in a brand new tradition. The escapist fantasy, the Pope adventure, the penny dreadful, the picked a trash compendium. <laughs> can, we, can I try something with you real quick? I just want to read science and then have you say everything else. Science! No longer the realm of the fop, the dandy, or the physicist. Science! Science! No longer the purview of the landed gentry or the moneyed upper classes. Science! Science is today! Science! Is now! Science! Is for you! <laughs> oh God, it's gonna make me cough. <laughs> Wow. Well, thank you all for, uh, for uh, letting uh, us take you on that little journey. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on a Wednesday Club. Uh, we're here this every is single Wednesday. This the actual back of this comic that has oh. caused us all to lose our minds. I'm very sorry. Uh, but yeah, this is back when Fraction lived in Kansas City, which I think was an awfully long time ago. I was about to say, I didn't even huh? know he ever did. As told by Mr. Fraction and Sanders, Kansas City, Missouri, and oh. published by Image Comics uh, at WTF, the final <laughs> words on the back of yeah. this book. Uh, anyway, it's a delightful sort of steampunky late 1800s adventure. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those books that when you first, I first picked it up, I thought it would be very kitschy. 
Yeah. And then it just defied all of my expectations by being quite uh, like fun and rompy, adventurous and rompy, I think would be my. Yeah. I don't want to like, there's, there are books I'm going to delve deep into, but this is, this is like a fun, especially for, for like those steampunk friends of yours that like are like very much like, put a gear on it. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, well, oh, look at that hat, put a gear on it. One of the things that I <laughs> loved about this book, let me see if I can find, the, can cast. find, the, find the I love that it's, here's our characters. And you can see there. Uh, oh, maybe, yeah, I forgot about that. Maybe not. But you've got like Tesla there. You've got uh, Marconi. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, Edison, uh, Andrew Carnegie. You've got like actual figures from history. Uh, and this is sort of a revisionist fictional. What if they all got together yeah. Mark Twain style? and Yeah. Samuel, Samuel Clemens Samuel kind of Clemens style. teams up with Tesla and. Edison and Carnegie are involved in some weird stuff. And like, they remembered to put at least one woman in it, which is mm -hmm. a nice touch. Yep. Yeah. Which well, I was going to say. Who Bertha Sophie Felicitas Frau Frau von Suttner, Baroness Bertha von Suttner, <laughs> an Austrian writer deeply involved in the armistice movement, starting at the publication of her novel Laid on Your Arms in 1889. That she was Alfred Nobel's housekeeper and secretary allowed her a long correspondence with Nobel. It's believed that the notion of a Nobel Peace Prize was in fact hers, and she won it in 1905. Uh, I do need That's to check cool. if this is all true, but it's in real life she was married secretly at first to author and engineer Baron Arthur Gundekar von Suttner, but this is a comic book so we don't have to concern ourselves with such details. We've taken great liberties with the Baroness's age and appearance within our pages, and for this we should probably apologize. Uh, here's, here's why I think that that's all real. Because Timothy Boone is wholly fictional. Whoop de doo, whoop de doo. That's a great that's, bio. Is that their entire bio for, for yep. him? Yep. Bio for Timothy Boone. Wholly fictional. Down on the bottom there. Whoop de doo. Whoop yep. Down on the bottom. <laughs> whoop de doo, whoop de doo. That, that really actually, if anything, kind of encapsulates the vibe of this book. Oh, really yeah. reaction. Yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a delightful <laughs> book uh, where uh, uh, Tesla and Mark Twain, they're not necessarily like. Iron mongers or warmongers, like they're not in it for profit, but they do to make this one scientific discovery that they're like, this will bring world peace, but we have to prove it'll bring world peace. Well, I mean, like it's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating the way that historical scientists are often portrayed as either like, like, because and and there there are there are caricatures like like, uh, oh God, oh God, I I took no notes on it. I totally forgotten about it. Albert Einstein, Newton. Sir Isaac Newton uh -huh. in Shield. Do you remember the yes. Shield? Yes. The Shield book? Okay, like Jonathan, Jonathan Hickman, Hickman yeah. Oh. Did a run of a totally comic forgot to bring that in. Where he took the organization Shield that we know and he gave them centuries of historical past. All the way to ancient Egypt. Uh, mm -hmm. did, just just went historical fiction crazy it was with this organization. Uh, and and like honestly, was, did he ever finish it? I feel like it well, the I portion like I read was it, delightful. Not only did it finish, I feel like it tied into the giant Hickman, I swear to God I have a plan, fantastic. Fantastic Four, Avengers. Well, that yeah. long. Fantastic Four definitely had a plan. Secret Warriors had an amazing plan. Oh man, um, Secret Warriors. That's a whole show on its own. I think. It's, that's a whole, yeah. That's, no, that's its own that's, topic. That's its own. Say? That's its own show. We, we, well, we actually, go. we'll have to do a show on 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 like the Hickman era of Marvel because I, it's so. Hickmania. Ooh. Good. Thanks, Zach. You're good so good. Good work. Look at Chief. that. Chief. Oh, and that's, oh, wait, that's, Architects uh. Architects of forever. So that's, wait, wait, who's, so, so Newton, there's Newtons here, and then that's, uh, that's, uh, that was da Vinci. Da Vinci. On the, on the left, yeah. Da Vinci was, like, the good scientist. A lot scientist. of Da Vinci and Shield. And, like, and then, like, there was, like, a historical Da Vinci in that book who, like, built robots to, like, fight off the scrolls. I mean, it was amazing. It was a, it was a brilliant revisionist, revisionist yeah, scientific Yeah, I history. love Hickman. He was like, like his whole run on Avengers, New Avengers, the oh. Infinity Event, see, uh, it, it went, uh, event, Secret Wars, like all of it. Like he's, I was just like a Hickman maniac. He's Hickman, one of the, he's Hickmania. one of those guys where he's like, like, and his indie stuff is in like. He starts yeah. piling on and piling on, and you're like, dude, the, this better resolve. This, this is, you're getting dumb. This better resolve. You've got like a hundred moving parts. You better, and then like, and then he just goes, boop, and you're like. What? What? He is How? like, I've, I've warned uh, a, a lot of the fans of like the Marvel show that I do on Tuesdays. <laughs> I've like a lot of them are like, hey, uh, Secret Wars this. What do you think about the comic? And I'm like, look, there's no way to just read no. just Avengers. If you want to do like if you want to do Secret Wars, you have to read 
Avengers, Fantastic New Four. Avengers, you have to go back to fan like, like Hickman is such a long to, game like, writer. Like Shield, I think like Shield is a place to start. Shield with. is a is it a is solid cornerstone. Well, we do yeah. have to have this episode because I'm curious which ones you think like if you think they all work equally well because mm -hmm. there's for me my mileage is sort of like this worked really well for me this worked less well yeah. but I think he's a genius. Yeah, like um, there is certainly like, like some titles that I'm like or like not even titles like uh, there would be issues like uh, two or three issues where I'm like. Meh. It's like a, like any car, like the, yeah. Yeah, the air conditioning's a little iffy, but man, it's got great pickup. You know, you're yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. And like, we, and I hate I hate that I always come back to Doctor Strange, but he's my love, uh, my greatest love, other than a, other than Brittany. He had such a fascinating, <laughs> he had a fascinating round. In, he in, well, yeah, and like I was excited for New Avengers because it was the whole like rev, re, sure. revisitation. Is that a word? Screw the Illuminati. We're going, we're going it's a terrible bit, idea, and I'm mad it. at all of you. <laughs> No, but it was it was funny that it revisited I liked that. The I love the Illuminati. Of course you do. I like it. I like <laughs> the Illuminati. Mean? I don't even know. How, oh, am we're I gonna insulted? Have, we're gonna have such a conversation about this. I'm so excited <laughs> because I'm like, I love the Illuminati. It, it drags. I love so revisionist me. fiction. Like even revisionist fiction within a fictional universe. I always like, assumed I that like that. eight of them sat down in a room once a month and like said, "How are we gonna deal with this?" Yeah. Like the fact that they secret dudes there. controlling the Marvel universe. But they got, but like, but they in tall get punished because of it. Like it's all them being There's terrible. There's fantastic and they, consequences. It's there, delightfully fun. But I'm thinking. No, no, they, they're absolutely. It was hubris and awful of them. But like, I love it when people do hubris, like experience hubris and do awful things. I love that. They, so speaking the, of science. Speaking of science. <laughs> the uh, the chat has a Britney count. I've now mentioned her once. Yes. <laughs> Does it count so, if you just say your lovely wife or your your your? Like, I don't know. Your, That's your up for. Okay. Well, I'm not in the chat. I don't know. I'm just Does monitoring. Does it count if chat. I say it? No, I think it has to be me. Okay, just I think it has to be me, but right now the Britney count is up to one. I don't know if they will count any of those as other counts. Yeah. Oh, Britneyception. Oh, Britneyception. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but what they what they did with Doctor Strange and the New Avengers, they started off and I was like, oh man, Hickman doesn't know how to write for magic. He's such a scientist, he can't write magic. And then like six issues in, he, I was like, oh, he's real good. Oh, he's real, real good. Oh, I like this butter now. Yeah. That will be another whole episode. other show. That's a whole other episode. Uh, it took 16 minutes to mention Britney on today's show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, someone says, "Who was my first love, Britney or Doctor Strange?" Doctor Strange, because I knew Doctor Strange first, but Britney is my greatest. Yeah. We'll put Britney in a Doctor Strange costume. And that will be the end of you. <laughs> that will be the enemy. Yeah. I have begged her to do Clea cosplay. Oh wow. Okay, no, never mind. We're yeah. not going there. Anyway, yeah. Well, well, we we have well, she does have a great squirrel girl <laughs> costume. To be she fair. does. Her Squirrel Girl costume is it's, epic. It's on point. It's, it's, it's epic. You've seen it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought so. So, I thought back to back. I'm just enjoying this. Yeah. This is hilarious. <laughs> Science! So, so like, we've talked, we've talked a little bit about some of the, the fantastical prehistory characters of where we take existing scientists and kind of uh, mold them into fiction in fascinating and interesting mm -hmm. ways. Um, one of the other uh, kind of great science heroes that, that I'm a big fan of are astronauts. I love astronauts. Yay! Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Astronauts are like space. They're like they're like science. They're like scientist football players. It's like the jocks of the scientist world. Yeah. They're like I, I loved, I love the whole idea. Like the like what, what what would I call it? Like like the the pop culture subculture of like of like the the tang swelling like you know, greatest American hero, hero mm -hmm. astronauts. And I was thinking of a couple really good books for people who are really into NASA. Mm -hmm. uh, and one that I'm a really big fan of that I was, I briefly mentioned to you, have you read Orbiter? I have not. Oh. Ooh. Tell us about Orbiter, Orbiter. Taliesin. Orbiter Look is, at us, we're both over here just like, oh, Orbiter is a really, is a really fascinating, it was, it was back at like the height of like Warren Ellis's I can do anything, I am a golden god, and I'm just going to write every book on Earth, and no one's ever going to tell me otherwise. Sure, <laughs> um, sure. So, Orbiter was kind of the idea of, like, this sort of fake pre-future, like, like, 20 years in the future, where one of the, one of the space shuttles, uh, one of the American space shuttles, um, went missing. Ooh. Uh, like, 20 years ago. Like, it flew out and vanished, and so the space program got canceled, more or less, and NASA is kind of... NASA is an underfunded, um, is just sort of an underfunded mess at this point. Mm. And it's been, it's been 20 years or so odd. I, I can't remember exactly how many years it's been. I'm looking, trying to find my little notes, but they, they have vanished on me because it's funnier that way. Um, <laughs> but suddenly the spaceship shows, the, 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 the space shuttle, not even the spaceship, the space shuttle shows back up. Uh, 20 years later. 20 years later. And... 
it's been augmented. Yeah, it just, it, you can see it, oh. the venture shows up, and it's been augmented with alien technology somehow, and it's been really far, and one of the astronauts is still inside, basically comatose, like, like he's just like kind of, and the remnants of NASA, these, these like, these engine, it's like, it's an engineer, it's a, um, um, uh, a astrophysicist, I want to say, and a, and a psychologist come in and try and figure out what happened. And that's the whole book, oh, is neat. then like, we have this ship, and we have to first figure out how to get into it, and then we have to start figuring out what's been done to it, and then we have to start figuring out how to, getting the, how to, to get the, the astronaut to communicate with us again. And so it's just all of these people interacting with each other using just deduction and science to figure out what happened and like basically and and it's this very um positive glowing beautiful story it's it's got like sort of that same way like like if you remember the movie cocoon it's got this very space positive get out there and meet alien worlds and get out there and explore. The sense uh, of wonder. And, and the wonder and like just, just from people with chalkboards going, oh my God, I think I know what this is that got grafted onto the, to the, to the space shuttle and why they did this. And this is why our readings are this way is then there's a gravitational flux in here. They did this to the ship to send it back and this is why he's still young and like, it's amazing, and it's how, just... How, is it one, one trade? One what? trade. Oh. Nice. It is uh, one beautiful trade. Oh, I want to read it now. Yeah, it's yeah. great. I have it at home, and I meant to bring it, but then... Um, I'll bring it to Burning Man. I'll read it out there. there. Will you really bring a comic... Will, will you read a comic book at Burning Dude, Man? Dude, I read Inda Shambhala every year at okay. Burning Man. I've only ever read one comic book at Burning Man. Yeah, it's super fun. Oh, like I'll take, I'll take a that day. That sounds like a story. I read Watchmen. I was, I was there. Oh, I nice. was there with my, my. Uh, I, I went with a, with a girlfriend at the time, and we, we read Watchmen together. She was like, I never read it, and this will be something to do while it's 150 fucking degrees out. Yeah. And we did. Watchmen's Good. so urban. It'd be weird to read it. It was. Like, well, it was. It, 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 it helped press it into. I will say, I had never really. This was years ago. Uh, this was many, many years ago. But I had never really, fully taken in just how barren the morality of that book is mm. and it really being in a place that was literally the the emotional opposite of that book really threw it into into a feeling of 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 surreal of, of, of like surrealism that was was it's really hard to oh to that's really interesting, Super interesting. Interesting. it was fun yeah it yeah. was like this is a this is a giant group of people who are doing nothing but making art and being really nice to each other yeah and then you have this book <laughs> That's Just one of the reasons I love to read. Opposite. That's one of the reasons I love to read into Shambhala out there because it's such a beautiful book and it's mm. so trippy and weird and philosophical and it's like sort of premise of like you can save the world but you have to decimate a lot of people to do it but the world will be forever peaceful I and love wonderful. That kind of like it's just like oh man what a great book to read it. I love I love I love quelling villains. That's one yeah. of my yeah. It's a, that's a I have a whole thing. I, I, one of my favorite things I ever wrote uh, was for a, going slightly off topic, was for an anime called Ar uh, Read or Die, which was about basically super-powered librarians mm -hmm. who can con tele telekinetically control paper, saving the world from, it's kind of on topic because they were fighting genetically engineered historical characters who had been given superpowers um, and like, brought back to life. This sounds amazing. Read or Die is amazing. Read or Die, Read or Die is amazing. Man, you're giving me so many uh, comments Read or Die is amazing. It's not a, well, it is a manga. Uh, there is actually is a manga. The manga is amazing. It's actually we'll we'll go with this Yomiko Reedman, who's the superpowered librarian who works for the British Library, uh, and her novelist best friend, who's maybe they're into each other. There's like a weird female relation named Nene Nene Sumiragawa, and all these telekinetic, uh, their paper paper kinetic characters who can control paper, and they're fighting like and one of the one of the villains that gets genetically engineered is a uh, is a famous. Um, I'm trying to remember his name. Is a um, the, 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 is a uh, 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 Japanese. They're not all Japanese, but this one was a uh, uh, Buddhist philosopher and poet named Iq, who was like one of the great, an amazing poet of like of like very early Japan. And and so I got to write this amazing speech that he gives about like about saving the world. And he's like, so, you know, a friend asked me this question of. How does one decide who deserves to live and die? And I've pondered it for many years now, and, well, I think you're all going to be very excited to see my conclusions that I've brought up. And he just, yeah, and he created this, this 
he had Beethoven compose a piece of music that actually would cause people uh, like ten, like eighty percent of the population to just kill themselves. It was really it was an amazing book. It's an amazing book. It's great. Wow. <laughs> good 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 anime. Good manga. Really good manga. Uh, Reader die, and then there's a sequel, Reader Dream, and then there's a, another. Um, um, TV series called ROD the TV, TV, which is quite good. We're gonna have to do another manga episode where, oh, yeah. where I just sit and watch you. Go. I will, I will bring, I will bring some manga. I will bring, bring some you've, intense you've, manga. You've, you've done it before. Like you, you don't have to threaten us with it. We've oh. seen you do it. Oh, it's yeah. on. We, we assume you will. That is the yeah. fact, the plan. Yes, yeah. I, was, I yeah. was, I was trying to think of like some really good, good science manga. Nothing really killed. I was, I was trying to come yeah. up with some fun stuff. There's well, can some good I historical. But... Shout out some of my favorite. Please, please. No, uh, like, no, I'm, I've been uh, so one direction I went with this this prompt was that a bunch of my favorite books are the nonfiction ones. Uh, so for instance, many of you who've been following me for a long time have heard me shout these out before, uh, but there are some fantastic biographies uh, done in mm. graphic novel form. Uh, one of the absolute legend Richard Feynman. Oh yes. Uh, are you, you're familiar with the with Feynman, the man? No, no, no. Please bring me, bring, bring it to me. You you can't. Oh no. Seriously? Have you not read? Okay. Uh, Richard Feynman was uh, an offbeat physicist from the mid 20th century, uh, mid to late, I guess. Uh, he is well known by me for the fact that, like, uh, in high school, you, many of us passed around uh, the books of essays he'd written, and he's like the funniest dude on the planet. Yeah, he's a quirky physicist. Uh, he's, his two books were uh, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, which is a thing a woman a, said to him once. That's a great title. Uh, mm -hmm. And What Do You Care What Other People Think? Which is what his <laughs> uh, first wife used to say every time she tra tricked him into doing something embarrassing. Because um, he, <laughs> like, so the, the truth is that the, the real Feynman, like, as you meet him through these essays, uh, is just... Just a, a delightful creature. He's he's like the original like, and then I took a trip to Brazil and learned to play the bongos like guy. He's that guy. Um, yeah, there. Thank you. There yes. we are. Surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman. Adventures of a Curious Character. Oh God, look at oh man. And he he has just just the most delightful mind. Uh, it, it's some some tragedy as well, especially in the second book. You get into the fact that like his his first wife. Uh, had tuberculosis during his was like his high school sweetheart. Uh, they got married knowing that she didn't have long, and they had Oof. a couple of really good years. Um, and they wrote each other letters while he was working at Los Alamos, uh, and she was in the hospital. Uh, and they would write each other <laughs> like there's wonderful stories. This is just a Feynman diversion because I assumed no, no, I'm this in, already. I'm but in. like they would write each other like little puzzle letters, and it would drive the army censors insane. <laughs> because he was literally receiving coded messages no one could understand. Oh um, my god, that's amazing. Because his like puzzle-loving wife was in the hospital and bored uh, oh. and just messing with them. So uh, Paul Drake here says, uh, American theoretical physicist known for his work in the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics, the theory of quantum electrodynamics, and the physics of the super superfluidity of supercooled liquid helium, mm -hmm. as well as in particle physics for which he proposed the partner model for his contributions to the development of quant quantum electro ah no <gasps> it skipped up ah uh, uh, quantum electrodynamics, Feynman jointly with Julian Schwinger and uh, Shinichiro Tomonaga. There you go. Received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1965. He, he's, one of his key inventions was uh, the Feynman uh, diagrams. Uh, correct me if I got yeah, this wrong, but like I, it was I a way of visualizing the, this particular concept. Like that he and and it's that it's that sort of thing of like. The brain that sees things slightly differently finds a way to put to paper this, like, you know. It's easy to get carried away by the very romantic legend of, of, of Richard Feynman. He probably was not, like, a perfect angel human being, but, like, I'm a real big fan of him. Oh, no. Uh, no, I, I'm with, the same. I remember studying him in uh, one of my physics courses in, in college and, like, getting in, like, because I'm terrible at math. I cannot, like, if there's a, a form of, like, dyslexia for mathematics, that's me. Like, I, you put numbers in front of me, and I'm like, ah, uh, uh, seven. I just, I can't do it. Like, I can't. Very good. Household budgets that, out the window. Can't do it. Like, cannot do it. Uh, but I remember hearing about him. I don't know that he struggled with math, but he developed the, the diagrams. And I remember falling in love with him because I could look at those diagrams and be like, oh, that makes so much more sense. Mm. So, like, I, I fell in love with him because, like, he actually helped me understand at least mathematics in the course of that physics uh, Cole Drake has one more great uh, story associated with Feynman. Uh, he was on the panel that was consulted uh, in the wake of the Challenger disaster. Um, 
Feynman played an important role in the Presidential Rogers Commission, which investigated the Challenger disaster. During a televised hearing, Feynman demonstrated that the material used in the shuttle's O-rings became less resilient in cold water by compressing a sample of the material in a clamp and immersing it in ice-cold water. Wow. It, it like, uh, yeah. So... For those of us, I, I don't know how many of you were old enough to remember that happening, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be an astronaut when that happened. Oh, like, I, like I, at that time in my life, I discovered that you could write NASA and they would send you stuff back. So I, I had an address for NASA and I wrote them once a month. My mom and dad still have binders of stuff that I got from NASA and like from 84 to 86. <laughs> and like, I would literally study it. Like I, I knew like the names of all the rockets. I knew every single shuttle. I knew every single astronaut. Like I've forgotten it since, but like I had binders of this stuff. Space nerd Matt. Oh, such, oh, like so I wanted good. to be, I wanted to be an astronaut and then the Challenger exploded. And uh, let's see, that, that was what, 86? That sounds about right. Uh, and I was already a very tall child. Like, I was already <laughs> as tall as my mother at the age of eight. Uh, and I found out uh, through reading all the specifications for astronauts that you had to be, like, you couldn't be taller than 6'1". No. Because you wouldn't fit in the shuttle. I, can't, I don't even know if we could send you to space camp at this point. No, no, no I'm too tall. Like, there is so, space camp, by the way, for those of you who are. So I, I, I figured out when I was a kid, I was like, I'm probably going to be the size of my dad, who's 6'6", six, six, uh, and I'm 6'5", so I'm probably not going to be an astronaut based on height, unless technology allows me to do it because they perhaps or shrink or perhaps they <laughs> learn like how to make you, things bigger. You're like, maybe they'll make the space station and you're like, maybe they'll make pin particles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you go my for the more fantastic. My, my money's on pin yeah. particles. Uh, so then I, I, yeah, anyway. It just seems easy. That's, We've that's my history. <laughs> that's little space nerd Matt. But I'll have to try and get, bring my binders in sometime and be like, look at all, the, like, I would write them love letters and they would send me like public relations stuff like oh, yeah. here's here's all these press materials here's like they sent me a giant booklet on the Galileo mission with like concept art and specs on the satellite and how the probe would work and I would just like every day after school be like oh, when are they launching this thing oh my god yeah uh -huh. so so to pair with the so there's a graphic novel biography of Feynman that uh, I really really enjoyed uh, and to pair with it, I'm gonna look up the exact title because I think I remember look it, but at that I'm cover. not sure. God. Thank you, uh, Jeremy Tamiani and uh, uh, Sheldon Myrick. Something Myrick. Uh, I love if that's the world's smartest man. God help us. It's the pull <laughs> quote for uh, for Feynman. Uh, love any, and I love anybody with that big of a forehead. I yeah. Have to, like we, we we share a bond. And then there is a lovely graphic novel that is a. Uh, triple biography on three women who were pioneering uh, primatologists. I'm gonna get that wrong. You were, you were, you were mentioning that. Yes, uh, animal science. <laughs> um, Jane Goodall and Diane Fossey and the third one, I should have pulled up notes for this, uh, but I was just gonna bring it with me and it turns out I accidentally left this book in storage. Um, <laughs> So, it's called Primates, and it is the fearless science of Jane Goodall, Diane Fossey, and... Come on, load. I think it's Birate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Birate Galdicus. Uh, the fearless science of Jane Goodall, Diane Fossey, and Birate Galdicus. Uh, it's it's uh, also Jim uh, Taviani, and this is Maris Wicks. Oh, look at that art. Uh, uh, it's just wonderful. Uh, oh, wow. All three of them had, like, you know, different but roughly contemporary lives and and did important work with different species of primates uh That's and a like cover. those watching their path through science is super interesting and a great way to get interested in stuff so those uh, are two of my faves by the way uh we've had a couple people ask in chat who does the art on the chalkboard oh my goodness can win Ken Wynn, who who, Ken Wynn. Who, who gave us who gave us uh, a, a a a an astronaut. I uh, forgot to look. This is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. It's Moon Girl Thank and Devil you. Dinosaur. Oh uh -huh. yeah, so it is. Oh my God. It's it's uh, not in an angry way. Got, that uh, was an exciting. That was an ex no no no. <laughs> Very I, I it it. We've got Robin angry. and Heavy Metal up there still. We need to. <laughs> you're you're allowed to kick my ass, please. No but no looks, no. I'm just it looks so amazing. Ken is so good. And, what yeah, thank a you, Ken. great. Moon Girl his, and his, Devil Dinosaur. His, his, his family is visiting right now, too. They're getting a little tour of the studio. Aw, they should come in here and come on camera. They would probably love that. So Moon Girl is part of a wonderful generation coming up right now oh, in yeah. comics uh, of new science heroes. Are you mm -hmm. going to take Moon Girl? Uh, well, no, no, you take Moon Girl. You take Moon Girl. I haven't I'm read in. it, so I can't talk about it. I need you guys to tell me all about it. You take Moon Girl, I'll take Wasp. Uh, oh, lovely. So, so I, I need to catch up on Moon Girl, but the beginning, Luna Lavella, right? 
Uh, yes, I believe uh, so. She is just a real delightful middle school space nerd uh, who makes friends with a dinosaur who has fallen through a time portal into modern day New York City. Uh, <laughs> and her co her coworkers, um, classmates call her Moon Girl because she's a dork. Uh, and she lives kids on are the mean. moon. Uh, she wears a shirt with a moon on it, uh, you know, gets into science stuff. Uh, but uh, Luna Lafayette? What? Oh, shoot. I need to actually, someone correct me on her name. Um, oh, God. Uh, Devil Dinosaur is one of those Marvel characters that, that just has had the most interesting and fascinating reality. Yes, he comes yeah. from a, a, a Kirby comic, Moon Boy and Devil Dinosaur, which is sort of prehistoric set and was just adventures of like a kid and his pet dinosaur. Well, it, was like, mm -hmm. it was like a cave kid, if I recall. Yeah, yeah he was, he was very, like a little he was, like, caveman, he was yeah. just wearing jeans and was like, had long hair, which just was like, ah! He was a wild child, he yeah. He was a wild child, and then, and then like the notion of like, girl genius with, with devil. With the only Caroline has my back, Lunella Lafayette. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so the, oh, what a name. So this completely unscientific Kirby comic that's just fun about like an imaginary cave kid and dinosaur friend uh, like has now been brought into a beautiful modern context as Devil Dinosaur ends up falling through that, that time portal into modern day New York. Uh, and uh, Lunella, who is, turns out is a little baby in human, uh, but just also <gasps> like, is she? isn't she? It's their new, it's their new, uh, she was a mutant, I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah. It's the oh. new, like, uh -huh. like, well, yeah, I know it's the new mutants, I just, well, the not new, new the mutant. new mutants, but the new, <laughs> new mutant. The new mutant. Yeah, it's inhuman. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and, that, and it, it's I'm interesting too because so like the much. last the last real usage of Devil Dinosaur that I recall was that weird um, Next Wave book. Yeah, I think you're right. Where they just had him sipping like martinis and speaking like like a British villain, which was kind you know, of you know where you know where else you can see Devil Dinosaur? Where else can you see Devil uh, Dinosaur? In the uh, second Marvel Legos game, he is a playable character. He and it's, is not. It is. Fantastic. Oh no. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to jump off the shield helicarrier as someone else and then halfway through falling, turn into Devil Dinosaur and then have a dinosaur just fall into the middle of New York City and start wrecking cars. <laughs> a Lego dinosaur? A red Lego dinosaur? Yeah, red Lego dinosaur. Okay. Uh, Luck 7911 says, my daughters adore Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. So great having a super smart superhero girl that is my kid's age. Mm -hmm. um, she's just like, you just. You just love her because she's. I like. I was in Science Olympiad in junior high, so I might over-identify slightly. But it's just oh, that no. like takes everything too seriously, wants to know everything, wants to figure everything out. <laughs> like she's just delightful. Um, so tell me about the Unstoppable Wasp. The Unstoppable Wasp is a very okay. So so it's it's a it's another Marvel legacy character, um, which was uh, um, uh, Nadia, I believe is what they're calling her. Who is um, she's the daughter of Hank Pym. And a his first wife, which is one of those things. Look at that cover. Ah, oh. she's dancing. She's dancing. It's adorable. Uh, she's the, the daughter of the original of the original uh, Ant Man. Mm -hmm. uh, she has been raised in the Red Room, which anybody who's a fan of the Marvel comic books basically knows is kind of the the Russian system that developed the 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 uh, 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 Red, uh, Black Widow mm -hmm. uh, project. But she didn't come out tortured and dark and evil and sort of. Kind of came out weirdly. She escaped. She's one of the few people who's ever escaped the Red Room. She's kind of bubbly and a little frenetic, and has is uh, has a difficult time with socialization. And mm -hmm. and and so she's a great legacy character in that direction, where where she has the the very typical. One of the things that sort of characterizes the Ant Man and Wasp uh, legacy characters has been um, an inability to properly socialize with people <laughs> on a prop on a on a uh, reasonable level, and of course. The notion of these were super scientists, and they are people who 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 developed some sort of um, some sort of gimmicky uh, super science effect that they use to turn themselves into a superhero. The cool thing they're doing with Nadia, though, um, is is that they have, and this started with issue eight, and it's been a fun book. But issue eight was the issue that broke me, um, where it finally became really really interesting, which was that. Janet Van Dyne, who was the original Wasp, who was the second wife of, uh, of Hank, Hank Pym, the, uh, uh, she has sort of decided to take Nadia under her wing and uh, decides to, to take the, her, what, what would it be, her stepdaughter, technically? Like, or like the daughter of her, her, her ex-husband's ex-wife? Like a very, a very tangential relationship to this girl and decides to basically give her a think tank. Like that's, she's sort of, she's, uh, Nadia has got all of these friends, these sort of super far, smart friends who are physicists and scientists and, 
engineers. It's a little bit Big Hero Six, mm -hmm. and Janet Van Dyne basically goes, "I'm I'm going to just fund, give you a think tank, and you guys can just sit here and build whatever it is that you want." Because Janet Van Dyne herself comes from like a wealthy family and is a, she's a got bit of money, a socialite. Yeah. And she's a socialite. She's a fashion. She's a fashion yeah. designer. Um, and she just sort of, this is just what she decides to do to like promote science and promote these, these young scientists and give them what they need to, to, to function. And it's, and they kind of now have their own headquarters full of like super smart kids just mm -hmm. doing cool stuff. And it's really, the whole book is super sweet and really fun and very, um, it, 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 it creates, it, it does like a similar thing that like the Monkeys TV show did, which is it creates an environment suddenly where you want to be around all these fun, smart people doing yeah. smart yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, uh. It's really, it's one of those great, and like, I love that they're right setting up the laser Right back to Science cannon. is the New Rock and Roll. Science mm -hmm. is the New Rock and Roll, and, yeah. then, and then this is, uh, Science is the New, is the new pop music. Well, and that's, uh, right it, there. like, talking about that reminded me that uh, we've got Squirrel Girl, uh, Doreen Green, who is a mm -hmm. computer scientist. Like, Which is just so delightful. It's so fun. Like, because they it's keep so solving fun. problems with computer science, and it's just so good. But it's, like, it's and it's not even like... Hack into this and do the mainframe. Enlarge, enlarge. It's not like any, it's like. Enlarge, thank you. It's, it's like just really like thinking logically about the situation would reveal yeah. the following flaws in the plan. Like, yeah. it's, it's the most adorable. It's like. Brian it's, North. Oh, it's the best. Well, I it's, love it. It's, there's a lot to be said about this new generation of superheroes who are very analytical. There's a lot yeah. of, there's a lot of, of. There's a lot of, of reason and a lot of, I mean, like we had it, we had an era in superheroes where it was about, where it was a very emotional era, where it was mm -hmm. about, you know, it was about vengeance or it was about, you know, being the best you, there is at what you do and, or about, you know, getting your revenge and being getting, like there was a lot of emotional impact in what you did. You had characters like Rogue or the Punisher or mm -hmm. Gambit, where like, where it was all these interrelationships and all about how they felt. Mm-hmm. And so much, so much about th this new generation of heroes is, is how can I affect the world around me? It, is it so much? It's 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 such a, a. I'm like, and please feel free to disagree if you. But but there's there there seems to be a, a like a, a a broader angle to all these new new characters that I've really noticed. It is interesting. There's a crop of of heroes based on who's who are distinctive based on the way they solve problems. Um, and, and that's like you've you've also got runs like the most recent Hulk run uh, with Jennifer Walters has been focused emotionally because it's been sort of a story about trauma sure. and healing. Um, so you can still find variety, but then you also have like uh, do we haven't even gotten to Riri? But yet. Like you can, mm -hmm. I, I would know. I'm like Riri's coming up, but like you, like we had Peter Parker who was super smart and was this really clever kid, but he was still webbing up muggers. I mean, like that was that was he was using his smarts to to stop muggings. So and like that's just not what the new kids do. What what do you think? like the sort of like cultural impetus would be like where's that zeitgeist coming from that like we're getting so many changes in comic books in that capacity like the, the old folks it, it, it like and and like going back to like what you were saying with the emotional and everything like where's where does that come from where does that bubble come from like what's going on in society at large that you think sort of focuses literature and comics and stuff like that or is there an answer? Maybe I'm just like reaching. I mean, for like I could, I could throw things, but I, you know, I who who knows? These are these are by their nature complex questions that have complex yeah. answers. I would say definitely complex questions with complex answers. Some of the current uh, heroes, from the ones we're talking about that are within the last five years, I think are, uh, and we talked about this a little bit before. If you if you talk about comics like responding to themselves and their own trends over time. Uh, I think that some of the figure it out heroes are a response to like the the dark and gritty or vengeance heroes mm -hmm. where uh, like if you have sort of straightforward superheroics of like punch the problems, stand up for what's right, uh, and then you have the like, okay, but what if they take it too far, which is interesting to yeah, a certain extent. Yeah, it is. Then the, the only way to react against both of those is like, okay, what if they find other ways of solving their problems? And it's just like... All three of those things are <laughs> present over time in comics, but you'll, you'll, I guess you'll tend to sometimes get bunches of people investigating I, similar things so at similar you, times. You, so what you're saying is you feel like it's more of an answer to what has come before. It's I think like, it, it's well, just, yeah. instead it's of like just what's going like, on like in society or culture or whatever else, it's more, well, the comics were doing this, but we've got to find a new way to approach this. Everything's Otherwise, a we're repeating this. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would say I the think world that, itself is a reaction to what has gone before. Yeah, yeah. everybody's sort of like, 
doing like, okay, well, if all that went before, then now what? Yeah. And I think right now that's landing on a bunch of like, here's what we haven't seen of enough of. Here's what yeah. we think might be interesting and gives us a new way to approach these stories that doesn't exactly duplicate a bunch of stuff that's come before. It's sort of like Batman is the answer to Superman kind of. Well, like. Or things like even I was just thinking like Dr. Manhattan would be a good version of like a corrupted form of this influence of somebody who's taking mm -hmm. that broader view of a superhero who's taking that broader view, but it's having a negative impact on the world where he's... He's losing sight of the of the the micro in, in favor of the macro, and that like we had that almost as a villain character, but like the positive a a aspect version of Doctor Manhattan then becomes like Miss Marvel mm -hmm. or or Moon Girl or like one of these characters where or Riri, which we'll get to, these characters who are taking that that macro view but not losing the micro view, who are just getting a what's broader so interesting to me is that the same comics that like. You know, within the last 10 years, uh, Marvel was doing Illuminati and sort of looking at like, well, if all these really hyper smart people were around, wouldn't that naturally mean some of them are kind of abusing their power? And like, that's it's what what I love is that like, not everything is a directly follows from because mm -hmm. you would not expect that that to give rise to a set of like, now nah, we choose to be optimistic and hopeful and believe in the power of science heroes. Like that doesn't naturally follow. No, it doesn't. Um, but here we are because this is, are. just happens to be the energy of the writers and artists out there and the kinds of stories that they are interested in, or at least the ones we're looking at. Man, right now. I cannot wait to dissect those Illuminati books with you because there's, so, <laughs> oh, there's so much in yeah, there. Yeah, I love those. It's been a while since I've read and, them, but and, I love and, those. And you reminded me of a of a of a of a bit from, and we will have a Grant Morrison episode because we've been talking. Oh about no, that. there's not enough. But there's a, Grant there's Morrison an out there man. to really do that. I know there's not. He hasn't written nearly enough. Yeah. There's, there's an Animal Man issue, which we will get into, where he's actually having this discussion with Animal Man. Grant Morrison writes himself into his Animal Man book at one point and explains how comics works to Animal Man. It's mm. really fascinating. And he, and he basically breaks it down, and this was kind of the summation of 80s superhero comics, which is like, oh no, we dress you up to, to look like one set of like per personal ideals, and then we would take your antithesis. Say, like, for you, it would be like a guy who's like a carnivore power who like just like eats nothing but red meat and like hurts animals and then we would have you two punch each other to figure out who's right. And it was like, don't, don't laugh, that's how we figure out things in the real world too. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, I'm like, I think we've kind of maybe evolved, or I, I don't want to say we've evolved past that, but we've found a way to tell stories that evolve past that. There's nothing wrong with two yeah. people putting on costumes and having a wrestling match. I love it. Yeah, we all do. Uh, who doesn't, really? Who, who, doesn't, who doesn't like watching Two people wearing costumes of, of polarizing uh, emotional values, punching each other to figure out who's <laughs> right. That's cool. Super cool. It is. It's fun. It feels good. But like this, this new stuff. Um, and Riri, Riri, Riri uh, you have you read any of the? I've read a couple of the issues. I'm I'm behind. I'm super Riri, behind man. on so much. So currently wearing the There's Iron Man armor much. as Iron Heart. Uh, Iron Heart, which I dig. <laughs> talking yeah. to her very own little weird AI Tony Stark, which is, is weird. Uh, <laughs> Riri Williams. Oh, Riri. How old is Riri? They're, they're, 15, they're 16? 15, 16. She's young. Uh, she's very specifically young. Um, where is Riri? There she is. Look yeah, at that girl. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I love the notion that in the Marvel Universe that like they have now identified really smart kids and are like very specifically going, giving ki like parents booklets on how to not raise a supervillain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I like her because she's written smart. Like, I believe that she's smart. She reminds yeah. me of the smart people I've met in my life. Of like, she's charming, a little weird, um, a little, I don't want to say, she's a little emotionally stunted. I'll say mm. it. She's emotionally stunted where relationships don't quite make sense to her, which is why she, um, she has a very Peter Parker moment where one of her best friends um, and, and, her, and uh, is it, uh, one of her parents uh, gets shot very randomly just in a park. Arbitrary and violence touches very her arbitrary life, as violence. it does many superheroes. And it just, something snaps in her where she's just, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And I refuse to accept that this is a, like a not... I refuse to believe that this is something we're just okay with. It's, and a, it's a portrait of sort of like a gifted kid struggling with complicated realities, which obviously has many yes. real world and, examples. And so she's sort of, I mean, and I think they'll probably eventually cover it. I feel like they're getting there, especially with like her most recent adventures, which have been very intense, uh, that she's kind of having a little bit of a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. I think she, I, I would classify it as she has a nervous breakdown and builds herself. It's very Iron Man 2. <laughs> uh, she has a nervous breakdown, builds herself a suit of armor, and decides that's how she's now going to like 
confront all of the issues in her life. Mm. Yeah. Um, and Tony Stark being Tony Stark, there's an AI version of Tony Stark who, for reasons that are beyond irresponsible, decides to, uh, to encourage this. And it's like, well, it works so well for me that I'm now an artificial intelligence floating inside my own armor. I'm sure it'll go great for you. Um, uh, and yeah, and she, like one of her, her great stories is she just became the political leader of, of Liberia, of the Doctor Doom. Wait, what? Speaking of not all Did scientists really? are good. Uh, you know, she, she flew in there because she just got angry because they were like, met, like she had a conversation with, with S.H.I.E.L.D. and they're like, could you take care of this thing for us? Which, asking a 14 year old kid with their own military grade suit of armor to do. And she flies in Seems there. Seems a little irresponsible for a and government like, organization. And there's but. like the new queen of Latveria, and then she's like, and she's like, no, the, like you, you know, the, I'm the rightful ruler here. There's nothing you should do. She's like, oh, no, here, I beat you. Now I'm queen of Latveria. What are you gonna do? I haven't got up. I did not know this was happening. Oh my god. And she's like, problem solved. So she's the new doom. She's the new doom. What do you think about that, chief? <laughs> Doom's the new Iron Man. Uh, so she just sort of and like has now tasked the military to like distribute food and like and like got the Latvian military. Yeah, and like the the Doom bots are like are like distributing resources to the peasantry. They're, so like, talk about your different approaches to problem solving. Yeah. she's learning probably right now the lessons of the limits of, of what one and of course it's a giant mess. Do. And yeah. she's aware of it. She's like, I I just sort of didn't know what else to do. Oh God, I don't know what to do anymore. Oh, what have I done? I hate I, being I hate being behind on comics oh, so bad. Oh, it's so nuts. Um, which, speaking of nuts, um, Squirrel Girl. Yay! And, uh, Yay, no, Doreen Green. Speaking of nuts, uh, we're going to do our topic thing at the end of the episode where we uh, select a random topic from the audience where you guys feed us some interesting topic that you want to watch us talk about for five minutes. Five minutes. So feel free to start suggesting stuff and it will get... It will get plucked from the uh, from the chat room and placed into a into a uh, small sealed envelope. It won't. We don't have any envelopes. We're not. We we don't have. Well, any it, of that. Like, it will be. It, it'll be a digital, a digital envelope, envelope that only a we can see. I yes. can't see. They you can can't see. see it. And and then we will all make fun of each other yeah. if we desperately try to answer this question. But uh, our producer Liz will choose it and will she tell will. us what we're talking about for five minutes and. And we'll of course, go. we have fabulous STEM heroes in other companies. We're, we're always Marvel heavy because we're always well, we, Marvel heavy. We've been but, covering some image and some Wildstorm. And some but you've things. got, uh, like, there was, a, there was a wonderful point where I have a friend uh, who is both a lady and a programmer. I know. <laughs> shocking. Um, and at one point, it, she was just so excited because she had three different books on her pull list that were all about female computer scientists. Mm -hmm. She was reading, of course, Barbara Gordon's Batgirl. Oh. Um, she was reading Squirrel Girl. And she was reading a lovely Vertigo book uh, called... Uh, a new Romancer. I don't know New Romancer. Oh my gosh. It was a mini and it was really fun. All right. It was about sort of uh, like a programmer who is working for a dating site that ends up like there's a the whole like zombie versions of great lovers through history come back to life. It's a whole mess. Wow. It's delightful. Uh, it's Peter Milligan. Oh, well. Uh, it, like, it was just six, a six-parter, and it's, it's the most adorable. And she's, like, she's super maladjusted. Like, she was raised, like, semi-experimental, experimented on by her, like, scientist dad. But, like, in a, it, like, she was like, my loving dad, you know, put well, the things in my brain. But she doesn't know how to relate to real people, so she's, that's why, like, she builds the, the bots for the dating site out of, like, these, uh, historical fixture, uh, figures that she loves and admires. Mm. Um, so, uh, uh, I think it's, I think it's Lord Byron that she brings back, um, oh, which, you know, wow. a great idea yes. in oh, yeah. general. Uh, and I, like, it's, it, anyway, it's a really fun book. But uh, for no other reason, I would want to say, like, how was that party where Frankenstein got written? I just wanted, that was like the greatest party. <laughs> the greatest party. I, that is the greatest party a, a party, humans have ever a party thrown. so, so lit that sci-fi got invented. Yeah. Like, how I've crazy was that party? I've had a party where party? a new form of, of or just, storytelling uh, just emerged. Yeah. Just Shelley just walks in going like, bomb drop. What are you going to do? What you got? What you got? Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Bam. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of roughly contemporary people and more real world things, uh, I still need to finish it, but I am utterly delighted by, uh, uh, it was collected last year, I think, uh, The uh, Adventures of Lovelace and Babbage. 
Uh, which is like I delightful read, fake first, sci fi adventures. I read a little bit of that yeah. last year prepping for the Eisners, and it was yeah. great. That's right. Yeah, super delightful. I forgot, I forgot about that. Book. Oh, I forgot about oh. that book. Uh, Lovelace and Charles Babbage oh. uh, invented yeah, the, so the proto computer. Um, this is a, a webcomic that sort of departs like. Contains a lot of wonderful real yeah. history and then a lot of nonsense. Uh, but it's a, it was collected in a relatively it thick was. compendium, right? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I checked it out from the library last year and then had to read way too much for the Eisners. To I, I, had a, I had another historical one that I was going to kick off that I, I got for my birthday many years ago, uh, uh, which was Leica. I haven't read uh, it. Oh. Leica is amazing. Leica is uh, is a graphic novel. It's Nick Abadis. Ab 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 I can never do it. I'm so sorry. I apologize. But it's on your screen right yeah, now. Yeah, right there. It's the, it's the true story of the first um, uh, mammal in space, of, of the dog that the Russians uh, put into a, into a little pod and shot mm -hmm. off into space. Uh, and sort of where they found the dog, his history, um, and about the engineers and, and the creation of Sputnik 2. It's really beautiful. Um, it's a little sad. Uh, it, it is it is not necessarily a, a happy end to Leica, but it yeah. is a it is a beautiful book. It is beautifully illustrated and uh, and such a fascinating chunk of history that we don't really we learn a lot about the Western end of the space race, but but the Soviet Union's end of it and their um, mad rush against ours is is really fascinating. Yeah. Um, and, and the fact that we were shooting all of these animals into orbit yeah. just to sort of one-up each other through the 1960s. They were really sending, cool. Russia was sending dogs, and America was like, dogs? Chimps. I, I even think, yeah, and then, and then finally they're like, we got to put a person in there. And, like, the and whole, Yuri Gagarin's like, bring it. Like, and like, like we were going we to shoot a person into space without a window at one point. Do you know that? Like, that was our, like, for like some human being was like, oh my God, are you nuts? No. Figure no, out no, how to no. put a window in this thing. You yeah. No. God. Uh, they won't be able to see anything, you dummy. <laughs> yeah, it was just so, like we have footage of a guy in a pod because this was how we thought of it yeah. back then. And then, and then there's no proof that they were in space. And I also, I want to... Like wanted, they were in a pod. It was probably really hard to figure out how a window was going to work without killing the Oh, person. yeah. That's a good like, point. in their That's defense, they were probably like, window would be nice, but we need you to live. What's funny is that when you first said that, uh, I thought you meant a uh, window in the atmosphere. Oh no, no! It was I like was like, "Oh my God, they were that. just going to shoot someone at the atmosphere and blow them up? That's the worst thing!" Oh, he means one of, one of the a window to look through. That's actually, also bad. It was actually figuring out how they could rotate a very, very small window at such an angle that you mm -hmm. would only need a tiny piece of glass to have a really beautiful view. Mm -hmm. So, like, figuring out how they could actually like, they, they there was a big thing. It was like, we can't have this giant piece of plastic or anything. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. So they figured out how they could make a very, very small window that still had a very extended view. Which was really fascinating. There was a Amazing. lot. There's, a, there's some great things. Here. Science. 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 Uh, so uh, we've got a quick question here. I oh, just yeah. want to find it real quick uh, from uh, Ruz Golf Di. Maybe. Sorry if I'm saying it incorrectly. Uh, does Atomic Robo fall into this category? Does the fact that he is a robot exclude him from being a science hero? Tesla made him. It counts. Counts. You heard I, it from I, Amy. She said so. Again, I, 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 I'm always, especially when, when talking about topics like this, I, list, I, th I like to think of it less as like a, a, a line on a football field mm -hmm. and more like a gravitational pull of two, of two objects. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's enough gravity. Like, you yeah, know, gravity, I agree. gravity happens. Uh, can I talk about, you were talking about dogs in space dogs. and the space race and everything. Uh, can I bring up the Manhattan Projects? Does, you, that, you, does that fit into this as, category? As long as, I, as long as I can quickly I can't believe you didn't go to Cosmo. Oh no, I love Cosmo. Cosmo's no, of great. course, of course. But uh, I figure that's more space opera than I, I space. I also have, have like to mention my, my, my space cat sticker that is one of my favorite things I own, Fuzz Aldrin. So now that that's done, I have a picture of a cat in a spacesuit that just says Fuzz Aldrin. Is it part of the Meow Curie program? Oh! oh. oh. Wow. Oh, score. Apollo? Apollo. <laughs> oh my god. Now make one with Purr. Do one with Purr. I'm terrible with puns. Do one with Purr. Oh, oh. oh. Um, Percury? Yeah, Percury. 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 Yeah. Percury yeah. 6. Percury. That's pretty oh good. My God. <laughs> wow. I'm really excited. That was amazing. <laughs> I, I oh, love that like every video. single every single week Amy gives me like one more thing to love about no. her. It's like, here's one more thing. But all right, there it is. Uh, no, I do love Cosmo. Cosmo is one of my favorite, like certainly one of my favorite characters in Guardians. Um, this is Marvel Cosmic. This Marvel is Space Cosmic. Dog. So there's a dog. Up, named, he showed up twice in the Guardians movies. He has. He's been like tiny little cameos in both of those movies. Uh, I honestly think he's gonna be like 
a um, big part in the third one. I, I, would I, think, I think James Gunn is like, you know what? We've introduced him enough. We've played around with it. Uh, and I think we're finally going to get him. I like the notion you know, of, of Rocket coming. having to compete with another fuzzy animal. Oh, yeah. And the, the, the Disneyland ride, it's fun because uh, Cosmo, yeah. Cosmo is in the collector's uh, collection. And there's like a couple like, of tiny little raccoon dog toys that he's chewed up. And it's so fun because, you know, like Cosmo and Rocket do not get along very no. well. Like they actually butt heads and kind of hate each other. So it's, it's a fun little Easter egg to have like just a kind couple of tiny little raccoon dog toys that are just like chewed to hell. Super fun. Manhattan Projects. Oh yeah, sorry. Which I got, I I got to talk about the beginning of it and enjoyed, but like it's not the real Feynman. That was my it's only not. like. I was like, oh. It's not. Mm -mm. It's not. But what I do love about it, like this is like some of my favorite stuff to do with comics, is take like actual living characters and make them completely fictional. So, sure. uh, it, uh, so the Manhattan Projects. If you haven't read it, it's uh, Jonathan Hickman. I can't remember the artist, but it's. Uh, very similar it's, to. It, it's very, it's very um, sketchy. Like um, it's very what's sketchy. His name from we three. I'm, I'm blanking. Yeah, out, uh, I'm forgetting on that name. I'm just gonna I'm look it up. Thank Terrible. you. Thank you. Uh, but Manhattan Projects is a uh, Hickman, and Hickman was a scientist. He was a physicist or something, right? Was, was he? I think so. I, I looked him up one time because I was in the love with him. He's like a graphic design, design guy too. That's yeah, he's he's a multifaceted. Man, uh, so many so many failed careers yeah. before he finally fell into comic books. Yeah, I know. Katara. Yeah, thank you. Uh. But uh, he is, uh, oh, thank you so much, Liz. I, thank you, I, Liz. Oh my God, does it say Dr. Strange, number one fan? <laughs> I asked Liz to bring me coffee at eight, because I knew I'd be out of coffee. Nice. Yeah. Thank I, you, Liz. That's pretty Liz, everybody. It's much more elegant than my just have two beverages solution. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, the, 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 the chat pointed out that uh, you guys are, are now also doing two beverages, which is what I've been doing for weeks. Yeah, no, so. I've, been, I've been pouring my, my no cream brute into my cream, cream uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, so okay, Manhattan, so Manhattan Project is uh, truly crazy and wonderful. It's amazing. I, I absolutely love it. It's uh, it's, it's John and Hickman kind of at his yeah. best. That's the thing I love about it because what is said was like the scientists. So it, it's Manhattan Projects. It's uh you know create the nuclear bomb. They're in Los Alamos and everything. Oppenheimer is one of the main characters in it, uh, and he was Oppenheimer, and he was the lead scientist for the Manhattan Projects. Um, but you've also got Albert Einstein, Einstein. Uh, you've got Feynman. No, but you know why I'm doing quotes for Oppenheimer. No, but I'm doing quotes on Einstein for the same reason. Have I not gotten far enough to... Okay. I don't know. Maybe Whoa. not. Sorry. Oh, okay. But, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> if you've read it, you know I am... Yeah. Uh, yes. Oppenheimer and Einstein, Einstein. Uh, and Feynman uh, and uh, the guy who invented rockets, the German uh, oh, von Braun. Von Braun. Uh, von Braun. Von Braun. Yeah. Uh, uh, Subject of the amazing Tom Lehrer song. You should absolutely go Google after the show. <coughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Which I think he got sued over. Did he? He may have. Uh, anyway, so oh. th this all takes place in the 40s. Uh, yeah, spoilers, possibly. <laughs> yeah, it's an alt history, but like a wild alt history. It's a history. wild alt history. And I think my favorite thing about it is that it says, yes, they created the atomic bomb. And yes, that bomb is oftentimes seen as what ended World War II, which is... A positive is a is a but is it's a narrative that exists. it's a monstrous oh, cover. It's a monstrous thing to have created and to have done and to un, have unleashed. And the thing that I love about this book the most is that it says these guys are monsters. Like <laughs> yes. like every every page, I'm like, am I rooting for these guys? They're, they're, like they're with the exception of, of Feynman, who is only vice is his narcissism in this book. Mm -hmm. uh, all the other all the other scientists are just as evil as they are positive. Like, they have positive impacts on the world, but they're evil. <laughs> and they're monsters, and there's, like, God, I, I think I actually took a picture of a line that I think Feynman says, because uh, it summarized okay, only, my thoughts on the book. I only pulled out a couple pictures for the, for the, for the um, folder of doom. He says, wait, no, that's that, not that the right. That art has got such a, there's so much. It is, yeah, well, that. I've only got it here, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it so the much. Heads. <laughs> no, so let me tell you what's going on here. Franklin Del uh, Delano, uh, uh, Delano, Delano, Del Ro Delano, uh, Delano Roosevelt dies, and they upload his consciousness into 150 <laughs> computer mainframes and essentially create AI in the 40s. So the very first AI ever is actually the transplanted consciousness of the deceased <laughs> president. Roosevelt. Sure. Yeah. And then uh, the current president, Truman, who it turns out oh. is an evil cabal, turns him against his creators. <laughs> it 
like that sentence alone, if that doesn't sell you, then Manhattan oh, Projects man. is not for you. If oh, it did man. sell you, good on you. Go buy every volume. Image Comics. An evil uh, robotic FDR is like legitimately horrifying. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> he, they're they're talking to Von Braun. Von Braun, by the way, is an absolute cyborg at this point. Look at this. Oh. Just like wow. Here, here put, put, yep. it, put it in the, yeah. in the, in the space is, of doom. Uh, uh, Thank you, thank you for pulling this he's up. Very, but, yeah, I forgot. But yeah, that's, but that's a good this, There's Von this Braun. line. Uh, he says, uh, Von Braun says, I've become a monster. And Feynman says, we're all monsters now, Doctor. Don't dwell on it. Yeah. Woo! And it's like, that to me is like, that's every single page of every single story in when, this when book. When Von Braun is the moral compass of your, of your science cabal, yeah. that's a bad sign. Yeah, <laughs> and like Feynman's sitting there like tweaking his cybernetics, but like Einstein discovers... Uh, in a dream, a door that allow him to go anywhere in the universe. Uh, Oppenheimer has a, a really bad multiple personality disorder, which that's an absolute spoiler. I mean, you find it in the first yeah. issue of the book, but I don't want to give that twist away. Um, oh, and uh, it's the nuclear bomb is like the least of the things that they do. I think that's the basic premise of the book was like, what if that was the tip of the iceberg? Yeah. Like, and and it's, yeah. it's and they it's end up kind of forming crazy. like this weird secret society. And like, there's uh, an American secret society and a Russian secret society, and sometimes they work together and sometimes they don't. But it's just like every other page of this book, you're going, what, 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 what happened? What is going? And that's and that's my favorite. That's Hickman at, at his best for me. Like when you're just what going, a, what a f huh? Yeah. What? It's so weird. I've now got the song stuck in my head. You you did that. Eh. Yeah. If, if you do look up the Tom Lair song, yeah, like the, the, the most poignant line I think is, 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 is once once the bombs once go off, who cares? Who cares? Where, where they come down. down? That's not my department, says Von Braun. We're getting uh, we're yeah. too political now. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. guys. Well, that's a while ago. So. <laughs> uh, but know. yeah, I I absolutely love Manhattan Projects. <laughs> like that's one of my favorite. I just love Hickman. So. Ark Vastron says Oppenheimer did say we're all bastards now. Yeah. Um. So it, it's an interesting like. He yeah. Oh, oh, great suggestion from Griffin. Go pick up the collected and bound run of Fear Agent from Dark Horse. Oh, I've got, yeah. that, I've got that at home. I still have never read it. Oh, I've got it at home to one. read. It's on my Did, did my Oppenheimer also said the I'm, I'm Become Death? I'm Become Death, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was, yeah. His, was that, uh, is that the Upanishads? Or? He was, yeah, he, man, he, there were some interesting, I mean, those are some interesting people in history. Mm -hmm. More great uh, picks. Late to is recommending Think Tank by Matt Hawkins. Think it's tank. about a genius working for DARPA that doesn't want to make weapons anymore. Think Tank's oh. really has good. has a bunch of, like, real science links in it. Yeah. Uh, terrifying background science in Greg Rucka's Lazarus. Yes. Um, it's oh, not my about God. science heroes, but he's done this very oh. meticulous world building, and he, he includes all this reference of, like, here's how close biology is to this. Here's how close nanotechnology is to this. Like, here's what I'm drawing from for that so that's sort of that's a world built out of like mm -hmm. scary science mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like Lazarus is one of my top favorite comics from like the last decade just like that book is terrifying and how accurate my, my like it was more fun to read a couple years ago when it seemed like <laughs> I know in the future <laughs> I know <laughs> no it's like every what other day I? I get new like <laughs> no like for real for real like I 100% agree with you. Like every other day, I'll oh. I'll be listening to the radio, like NPR or whatever. And I'll be like, "We're one step closer to Lazarus." Yeah. My God! Oh, Greg Rucka, I don't want you to be right, oh. but you are so right right now. Why? Why? I mean, like, I hate. Why is your cosmic <laughs> horror so adorable? Can you yeah. please not have such adorable cosmic it's, horror? Uh, yeah. Oh, Amy, oh. oh. no. But uh, ad uh, adorable science. I'm I'm oh. I'm just shouting all my favorite recommendations. No, do I, it. We've talked no. about it before, and I hope I talk about it all the time forever. I think Jody boosted it on her Sigma Boost. Narbonic. Oh yeah. Uh, oh. Fantastic I, science. I it's about that Helen yet. Narbon, uh, the, a mad scientist extraordinaire, uh, and her like hapless assistant Dave, and her excited student working for credit Mel, uh, uh, who just likes giant guns and uh, chaos. Uh, Got to read that. It is. Honestly, like it is genius in a four panel comic strip. Uh, it, it went over this course of a couple years and like grows from like, here's a joke, here's a joke, here's a joke. When did you become the most beautiful science fiction epic and how are you doing it in four funny panels? Uh, oh God, I've got it's, to read this. it's got like the nature of consciousness and, and uh, genetic engineering and like it's got all kinds of stuff and then just like being time travel, uh, uh, clones, but but like. So funny and so heartfelt and so wonderful. Uh, can I throw out another favorite of mine? Please do. Yeah. Uh, I, I know, like I was saying, this we're like killing everyone's wallet today. This yeah. is a one. Yes. Sorry, guys. This is I become death destroyer of wallets. <laughs> this is our. 
that's our uh, <laughs> not to make make light. But. Oh my God, I love you. <laughs> this is gonna be a rough episode, uh, man. Just like Amy, every week you give me another uh, reason to love you even more. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the 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 real crazy shepherd east of west is also a good. Yeah. Read. You're absolutely right. Uh, uh, letter 44 by Charles Sewell. I need to read this. Yeah, Tell me of it. Mentioned this. Oh, you, you mentioned this. I don't know this book. My God. So here, so uh, I love Charles Sewell. I, I think he's great. Uh, a great writer. Letter 44. I think 40- it might be Soul. And Is I it say soul? that only because I'm trying to remember it. Soul. Um, it might be. I don't know. Like I'm a soul man. Soul. Uh, soul. I'm losing Fine. my mind. Soul. Yeah. Uh, uh, but so here's. I'm going to tell you I the first. that cover. I'm going to tell you just the first issue. Because I don't want to spoil anything. Bring it. Bring uh, it. That's what we're here for. New president is elected. The day before he's uh, uh, put into office, inaugurated, he uh, arrives at the Oval Office because the other president has already left. And the uh, co- uh, 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 letter is addressed to number 44. You know, it's that whole tradition of sure. like the outgoing president leaves a letter for the incoming president, whatever. And he opens it up. And, he sa- and the old president is saying to the new president, I know you think I'm an ass. I know you think I'm the dumbest man that's ever been elected to office, but you don't know why I made the decisions that I made. Seven years ago, we discovered an alien presence in the asteroid belt. It's building something, and then all of a sudden, we couldn't see it. We don't know what it is. We don't know what they're doing. Five years ago, we sent a crew to the asteroid belt. They're three months away from getting there. The wars that we went into, uh, all the, all the, like he, we created a worldwide global financial crisis as a way to create financial bubbles that we could steal money from to create black budgets to fund this covert project. No one in the world knows about this. The wars that we started were to harden our fighters for the uh, instance of an alien invasion because we wanted everyone to be super practiced. There's uh, DARPA, but then there's what we created in the seven years that uh, I was president, or the eight years that I was president. They have all created these incredible super weapons that no one in the world knows about. Welcome to office. (laughs) And the president is just like, is this real? And he calls the the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and they're like, "Uh, other than the nine people that are in space, there are ten people on this planet who know about this, and now you're the 11th. That's amazing. And then the book goes back and forth between the politics on Earth and the astronauts in space and what they're discovering. And it is every single book just gets better than the last. Like Sewell, Soul, Sewell, Soul, uh, just very slowly, meticulously unpacks this world, this mythology that he's created. Um, And it feels very real and very well researched because like the asteroid belt would take years to get to it's way 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 out there so like the fact that he's like yeah they're this far out there and it takes them 30 to 40 minutes to communicate with us like all of that kinds of stuff is like very sort of like real actual world kind of science and it's like yeah we would it would take us 40 minutes to communicate with people that are that far away they would be waiting for their message they would have to go do all these other things and be like cool like in the comics they're like cool set the timer for 40 minutes because that's when we'll get our next response so you have 40 minutes to go do this stuff and they go do this stuff. But like, there's all these politics on the ship. Uh, there's like a military presence on the ship versus science presence on the ship. So there's, there's those two budding heads. And then there's this constantly emerging mystery of what do the aliens want? Are they here for conquest? Are they here to conquer Earth? Are they here for our resources? Like, and like it, it goes through and asks all those questions in like a really intriguing way, and it's just like, oh, oh, like, and I've only read like the first two and a half volumes, and I'm just like, I need more time to read all of this. It's actually wrapping up right now. Yeah, yeah. No, no, right there. Uh, yeah, it's nice. on. It's on Comics All Engine Limited. Yeah, uh, but it's so good. It is so good. It's like my Damn, favorite geez. kind of science fiction is like very well researched actual science, like you would need like these sorts of weapons in space to actually make them work without blowing you backwards and like they address all of those issues and it's so good no, hard, I love hard, it. hard science and the, the other one I'm trying to remember is, uh, um, what, what was uh, there's a great phrase for it uh, competency porn <laughs> yes of just watching people really know how to do things and just sitting there going yes yes wow <laughs> oh oh god of course you you grow potatoes wow <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you all, you do need that. starches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Competency point. Yeah. Yeah. Just, no, but it's very much well, that. Well, they do that. It's very much that, and it's very much like <laughs> they like like I mean, they don't like draw logic trees, but like in the dialogue, you can hear the logic trees of the scientists sure. on Earth trying to explain to the president, like, so you're you're asking us uh, if we believe that they're a threat or not. Well, let me go through the logic of how we've come to yes, they probably are. Like, mm. and it's like just this like syllogism back and forth where you're just like, oh my God, you're so. Like I like I wanted to be able to watch it so I could just like drink coffee and observe instead of having to read it. Like I was just like, oh, I just want to watch this. Where's my motion comic? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, letter forty four. Uh, read the shit out of it. <laughs> it's so good. It's one of my favorites. It's so so good. Do we have Do we have anything in the chat room before? I I have a I have a couple more to throw out as well. So. Uh well uh let's see uh. Who what? Who what? Chovexani. Yay! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Wow! Man, I feel good well, about that. That is a good one. That the party's so Allison. lit, science fiction was invented. Well, and it's like a whole terrible pun about fire and electricity and Frankenstein's mm -hmm. oh, yeah. monster. No, it's and like, there. that's. Cho, you're the best. <laughs> good work, Cho. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. That's awesome. Uh, uh, Treatment Show is literally just <laughs> shouting black science in the comments. Oh my god, I love black science. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to actually sit down with this. I remember it's like a, a blank spot for me. We, yeah. um, I read the beginning of Black Science. It's yeah, because, well, I mean, like, we've, we've covered it a little bit on the show. Well, and I talked about it last week on, on Heavy Metal with Whitney. Oh, sure. nice. Because she, she considered that, like, a heavy metal comic. Uh, so we talked about that last week, but oh my god, I love Black, like, Remender is, like, this is like, where Hickman is at his best with Manhattan Projects, Remender is at his best I think personally with with black science right. and that, mm -hmm. that comic is um, about dimension hopping so we're uh, the, a lot of this other stuff has been more about space travel and travel to other worlds and extraterrestrials this is we are tripping through the multiverse of infinite possibilities nice so like like in the very first issue uh, the entire first issue is him run like I talked about this last week I'm sorry audience but now I'm now I'm informing you guys uh, the entire first <laughs> audience uh, audience, the entire first issue is the main character running for his life, and in that enti you get the entire backstory as he's running, because like he's narrating it from his head, but you're also watching all these things happen that like feed into the greater story, all while he's on the run from frog people and fish people in an alternate reality on Earth where like amphibians evolved before mammals, <laughs> and then like the next issue is. Um, Manifest destiny didn't happen in America, and uh, the Native Americans were allowed to grow at their own rate, and they became like basically Tony Stark, but an entire tribe, like tribes worth of Tony Starks, and they just built these just fascinating, incredible. Was that? And they just held the West. Well, well not we only did they hold the West, they destroyed the world. Like they just took over the world with their incredible invention. So like they appear in World War II in the second issue. They're like, oh my God, we're in World War II and there's Germans, oh my God, wh what weird history is this? And they climb over a mountain to see like all these, like these UFO like ships. <laughs> but they're all Native American in design. And okay, like, that's pretty hot. it's just like, oh, Manifest Destiny didn't happen. This is the greatest thing yet. Oh, give me more, remember? It's Fascinating. It's so good. It is so good because it's like if infinite things can happen, Remender is exploring every single one of those infinite possibilities, and it's so good. I want to be Remender. I, I, I it's like in this book. It's so good. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, Black Science. Black Science. Excellent. I, I, I was going to bring us back to what I consider to be one of one of uh, uh, our our early pop culture. Um, Sci-fi, like like sort of the notion of the, of, of of the fantasy scientist, of the notion mm -hmm. of a guy who's just super smart and super cool, and I was remembering uh, a comic book that I had that was based off a movie, uh, which was of course the Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai <laughs> and the Hong Kong Cavaliers. If this sounds ridiculous to you, we are not friends anymore. It's <laughs> over. Of course oh it's wow! It's ridiculous. It's just also wonderful. It's, it's also wonderful. Buckaroo Banzai, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> is the greatest thing that Western pop culture has ever has ever created. Uh, there the, are, the I'm really greatest sad thing. that I've never read the comics for it. I've never the read comics, the comics. I've only seen the movie. So there was a movie, and the movie is ridiculous, low budget, and 
and wonderful. Wonderful. It is a strange mess um, and a fascinating piece of pop culture history. In this case, science is literally rock and roll because the guy it comes like gets recruited. He's in the middle of a concert, right, at the beginning mm -hmm. of Buckaroo Banzai. I think so. Yeah. yeah. No, he, the Buckaroo Banzai recruits uh, recruits his collection of scientists, of like super scientists, who go around being super scientists and saving the world. And they're also, but like the deal is, you not only have to be a scientist, you also have to play an instrument. Yeah. Because he's got a band, mm -hmm. and so that's the deal. And he's got his own in continuity. They're called the Hong Kong Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. um, in continuity, they have their own comic books about them. They're, they're Team Bonsai is basically like their fan club that is real, and there's comic books about their adventures. <laughs> and they actually have um, like like ninjas that work for them. Like like he's got like this whole infrastructure. He's basically a heroic supervillain, like mad scientist supervillain, except on the hero side of things, where he's got this. Ridiculous empire, and in the slightly in like in, in like in sort of the awful uh, semi-racist, uh, I say semi, absolutely racist uh, um, uh, era that it was. His his big villain was Han Hanoi Zan in the World Crime League mm. that they never really, thankfully, never really got too far into. But that there was this evil Asian magic uh, universe that they were sort of using the powers of reason to fight against that had killed his previous wife, and there's all this craziness. But there are there are novels. There's a movie. There's also a series of comic books that are. Like, if you were a fan of that 80s Transformer G.I. Joe Marvel comics that had these very clean lines and very nice colors and really sharp storytelling, it's a lot of fun. And he's a character that you can really get behind. He's like, he's like the great super nerd. Mm -hmm. um, and that whole team is a lot of fun. Um, Wasn't that the part played by the same guy who did RoboCop? Yes. Peter, Peter Weller, Weller. Weller, yeah. Peter Weller, a and lot. Jeff and like, Goldblum was in it. Jeff Goldblum was was in it. There was John Lithgow, right? John Lithgow was yeah. John Lithgow oh, God, was, right. was, was. Uh, was the villain. Yeah. Uh, oh my God, that's gave right. one of the greatest villain speeches of all time. Uh, John Lithgow oh. was one of the evil red lectoids from the Eighth Dimension. You know, uh, it's like amazing. you do. Eighth and a half, right? Yeah, there they are. And yeah. the ending, oh, famously, Christopher the ending, Lloyd. There's the, there's the world crime. There's the there's the uh, the the Hong Kong Cavaliers. And they walk through the LA River to like the best electronica music ever. That, yeah. That's the ending, right? It's the original bow ties are cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that was very much when like when like Doctor Who hit, they're like, oh, he's channeling Buckaroo Bonsai pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. I, I would encourage everyone to go watch the walking through the LA River like oh, ending credits scene. Just like, watch that and yeah. just go love. look that up on YouTube. And fall in love. It's so it's um, charmingly stupid. Lectoids. In the best way. Pure and evil from the eighth dimension. Oh, it's so good. There's so many great lines of dialogue. <laughs> all the villains are named John. Yeah. They're all the, they're all from another dimension. Yeah. John Big Booty, John Smallberries, John Yaya. Uh, they all work for Yo Yo Dine. It's great. Uh, it's good shit. Uh, uh, so let me let me throw a couple questions out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pustulant, I've noticed in the chat, has asked us a few times. Uh, thoughts about Scientist Supreme from AIM. Yeah. Ooh. What a fascinating, weird like. Aim, the, I mean, like, AIM's such a... I, I, AIM is a weird... AIM is fun, because they're not yeah. always trying to conquer the universe. Like, sometimes they want to make money, sometimes they want to conquer things, sometimes they just want to be doing more interesting shit than other people, or be more dangerous than other people. Yeah. Right now, they're superheroes. Yeah, right now, now they're superheroes, like, led by Roberto da Costa. Who's yeah. technically... Is he technically... Uh, well, Sunspot? they're calling him Citizen V right now. Yeah. Which I love, because Citizen V is, like, my old-school love. Like, <laughs> we're going to have a whole Thunderbolts episode. <laughs> um, nope. Never. No. <laughs> I already have the title for the episode. Wednesday, like lightning. Aww. Aww. Um, nice. Yeah. No, it, I mean, like, AIM's really, I love the, I love the design, the beekeeper suits. Is yeah. it still advanced idea mechanics, or are think, we using a different acronym now? Mm, I don't know. I th I've always thought it was advanced idea mechanics, I, I think but maybe still, it changed. I think, I think they may have changed when they went good. Avengers idea think, mechanics? Avenging idea mechanics, maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> they have their own... Evil island that's now a they're, good they're, island. They're, like yeah. yeah, the beekeeper suit oh. guys. Uh, and I think that is actually the scientist supreme. But like the scientist supreme is always changing. Like, yeah, because they die. It's a title they are, essentially. They, are, yeah. they get knocked off all the time. <laughs> but like one of my favorite things about them is that they are rogue scientists who just want to do science and be allowed to go where their experiments let them. Right. Like, and that's kind of what makes them villains. Is they're like. 
Damn the consequences. This is science, man. Like, I just love that. Like, I think that's... Yeah, they're, 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 they're very damn the consequences, which yeah. is why they also... And, there's, and, there's, and even there's a million different ways to play that, which is that, like, sometimes they're damn the consequences of whether this is, like, you know, you get the scary side of it, like, damn the consequences of, like, human experimentation, or there's damn the consequences, it might blow up, but it would be worth it. Yeah. Uh, damn the consequences, it might be illegal to make money with this, but we'll try it. Like, or, there's a million flavors. Or of, damn the consequences, let's put MODOK in charge. I was, yeah. I was sick. I was just, I wanted to bring up MODOK so bad. He's one of my favorites. We're, I love him so let much. Us, let us speak of MODOK. Let us M speak of MODOK. Mental organism designed only for computing. Kissing. Kissing. For kissing. Killing. Modoc. It was originally supposed to be computing, then it changed to killing when he was like, mm, I am smarter than everybody, I will kill you! I, uh, uh, we here, actually, yeah, we, the, the, the voice from the video game as we were talking about Marvel's Capcom 3 was very specific. <laughs> Death tastes like candy. <laughs> uh, there's Modoc, it's a giant floating head with baby arms and baby legs. Have He's you got ever, a little suit for his giant floating head. Have you ever seen Modoc out of his costume? No. Out of the chair? When he first appeared in, I want to say, Tales of Suspense and a Captain America. Uh, that when, sounds right. When uh, Captain America and Iron Man both shared Tales of Suspense, uh -huh. uh, they picked the oh, smartest man in AIM, who wasn't the scientist supreme. I think his name was George Tarleton. Anyway. That sounds... Right? Or Tarleton... I feel like you're in the right direction. Sounds it's, legit. Yeah. Do not um, remember. But um, they, uh, they picked this guy, increased his brain capacity... But they increased his brain so much that his head grew to gargantuan size. 60 science is amazing. <laughs> and he fell over on the ground and couldn't move. So then they had to create this chair for him. And that's, he Mohawk. looks he looks like he's a giant head with baby arms, but he's actually a giant head with a normal human who's, body. Who's, who's got like a weird crush on, a, on, a, um, on oh God, what's her name from, from S.H.I.E.L.D.? Uh, Mockingbird? No, the head of Shield. Maria yeah. Hill. Yeah, he's got oh, like he's that's got a crazy crush. Right. He's got he's 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 in love with Maria what, Hill. What what title was that? Secret that was Avengers. from that, that was, was uh, that's right. It was such a good run of Secret Avengers. Oh, Modoc. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> Modoc. I uh, love uh, Somnium Umbra. Just says because the '60s. Oh yeah, because the '60s. Absolutely because, because the, the '60s. '60s. Mm -hmm. Look at look at those wonderful little Kirby electric. Yeah. yeah I was about yeah. to say yeah, that's so Kirby. That's, that's so like Kirby. one of the most Kirby. Creations. How that has not shown up in a Captain America movie yet is just just breaks my heart. It d me too. Me too. I was like, I'm oh waiting. my god, they're gonna have to throw in Tarleton yeah, at some they point, gotta right? Do, they gotta do Modoc at some point. Yeah. There's also, if you want to see, like, people have had a lot of fun at Modoc's expense over the years. Uh, um, again, I'll bring up. Thank next you, Cole Drake. Tells us suspense Modoc. '94. Thank you. I own wow. that issue. Of course you do. You I love Modoc. I know how to buy it. Creature. It was like forty bucks at a convention. I had to have it. <laughs> nice. Thank you. I'm very proud. Modoc. I'm oh, a proud yeah, look owner. At, look at there's another great Modoc. Oh god. Oh wow, is that a that looks like a, a Gwenpool? Yeah, it's Gwenpool. That's Gwenpool. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. that looks also looks like an OMAC Modoc. Oh yeah. That's a little OMAC y. OMAC Different company, don't get confused. Yeah, I know. <laughs> OMAC is from DC. It's like a DC evil cyborg thing that we'll get into. Sometimes Brother he's I. good. But sometimes he's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Modoc is good. <laughs> yeah. Modoc Modoc is sometimes a hero. Um I was I was I had another good mad scientist book I, that I really want to recommend that's going to come up probably again on another episode, which is a book called Doctor Sleepless. Ooh. I'm doing a lot. Of, Warren Ellis writes really good mm. scientists. He's a very he's a very um, he's a very pro science writer. He likes he likes talking about the future. He wrote a book called uh, um, oh what was it uh, um, uh, uh, called Fifteen? Oh, yes, uh, he he wrote a book. Uh, that I'm, it's escaping global frequency, which had I've a lot of like, have read it. Had a lot of uh, futurism in it. But Doctor Sleepless, sadly, one of the things that happened to Warren Ellis uh, when he was when he was working was he had a, uh, a hard drive crash on him when he was writing a bunch of books, and so a whole series of books never finished mm. because he was kind of too his heart had broken too much to try and rewrite the endings to a lot of these books, and. Dr. Sleepless was one of those books that I really, it never quite had a satisfactory ending and that really breaks my heart. Because uh, it, was, it was really um, a big deal for me, which was this kind of near future, it was a lot of, it was a lot of um, he's very good at kind of guessing where technology is going. It was a lot of uh, you know, wirelessly connected phones and people having way too much tech in their lives and people starting to do like body modification clubs. Um, and this guy comes back to town who is who was like a he was like a kid who was like really big in, in in this in this city's 
uh, underground culture, and he's vanished for a few years, and he has this house up on the top of the hill, and he starts running a radio show at night, and he shows up as this character named Dr. Sleepless, who's kind of this insane mad scientist who's got some weird... He's, he's, got, he's got kind of this campy nurse in latex that's with him, and he's corny and a little ridiculous, but he's got this weird ulterior motive where he's kind of creating this, this, this ridiculous character so that he can actually like affect the culture and help bring about a technological revolution and, and make people healthier. It's really uh, like well, the, 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 the side, uh, the, like the, the, the graffiti that's on the wall all over the city is, where's my flying car? Hmm. And his whole thing is is kind of like the future was not the future we prom we were promised, and and you guys are going to have to scrape this future out of the tech that you've been given. And it's a really good archetype of the mad scientist, really given a lot of leeway. And and, and being Warren, he was he was very online at the time, so there's a lot of delving into real world um, like body modification people mm -hmm. who are putting. Uh, magnets in their fingers. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know much about. Um, no. Um, this is a real thing that people do, of putting of, in, of uh, putting magnets inside the nerve clusters of their fingers, um, so that other than the party trick of being able to pick up metal objects with your fingers, uh, you can start to get uh, you get nerve impulses when you get near electromagnetic fields. So people who work with electronics a lot, so they don't touch live wires, because yeah, they go near it, they'll start to feel impulses and they'll get extrasensory perception, and like. Oh, that's weird. Fascinating stuff. And this is something, this is really something that people do. Wow. Um, and he was taking all of this like weird science that he was reading on the internet of things people were doing of starting to like figure out ways of like running uh, monitors underneath the skin that ran off glucose and all these things that people were doing to try and augment the human body and turned it into this story. And it's really fascinating. And it's a shame it never really ended, but it was, I was, um, it's, it's got a lot of energy and it's very psychedelic if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, nice. Yes. Let me throw this out. Uh, I think it might be CL Jedi says, uh, "How do we feel about the turn Reed Richards took in the comics?" So wow, the, that turn, by the way, uh, is uh, in the Ultimate Fantastic Four universe. Correct? It never I, is that what we're talking about? I well, think so. I mean, is there another turn? Let's be fair that Reed Richards has taken so many turns. He's taken a lot of turns, guys. Now. Yeah. Um, Reed Reed is is what I would consider to be a complicated character. Oh, very. Um, very complicated. Reed is a product of another... Man, Reed, I, like, I knew we would get to the Fantastic Four. We, we have to. We like, have that's to. like, science! Like, yeah, I, they, I, I, again, some of the original astronaut heroes, uh, many of the Marvel 60s ones, uh, like, uh, in a... Like, I love that so many of the 60s Marvel heroes are scientists. Uh, like, because, you know, your alternative is just worshipping rich people. Yeah, um, And yes. this is like... This is clever people. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it, it's, so, you know, obviously Tony Stark, uh, Reed Richards, Hank Pym, like many of them come from these backgrounds, but Reed Richards has sort of become sort of, you can do a million different stories with him depending on your vision of what that's like. I happen to mm -hmm. love Hickman's version of it. Me too. Because he, he delves deeply into this idea of like, what's the logical extension of what Reed is like? Uh, and spoilers for that run, no, we here. meet a lot of different versions of how a Reed Richards can go. And a mm -hmm. lot of them are a mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we find out what makes our Reed different. And it's one of my very favorite takes on it because it's easy to write Reed as this like... I meant to do that. Yep. This is sort of... The, his big danger is often sort of the emotionally distanced thing of which like it can get... It's not always my favorite beat because poor Sue gets stuck in a lot of like very traditional problem roles uh, for yeah, uh, sure. like th being the wife in that situation. Um, but like the the question of like what makes what choice Reed makes that makes him our Reed and not any of these sort of disaster other Reeds like it's the heart of a lot of that run and it's it's probably my favorite thing Hickman's ever done. Yeah, um, I love that one. I, I I feel like the the first time uh, uh, I feel like the first time that I really noticed that Reed was a problem was that X Men versus Fantastic Four crossover mm. where Kitty Pride was phasing mm -hmm. and they brought her to Doctor Doom to fix to fix uh, to fix her. It was an amazing book, a beautiful book, and. Um, they find a journal that they think that Reed intentionally messed up the flight. Mm -hmm. There's a journal that implies that Reed knew that they were going to crash and that they were all going to get mutated and just wanted to see what would happen and did it to them on purpose. There it is. Yeah. Uh, and because it's Reed, even his wife and his 
family are like, yeah, you're totally capable of this. You are that dark. Yeah. See, and, I don't love those and, those interpretations. And he's like, and being Reed, he's like, you either believe that I didn't or I didn't. And they and they and they get to that point of, well, now we we know you didn't. And, and like, it's them finding that place of going, oh no, this is a trick. Mm -hmm. But having that mm -hmm. moment of like, you've been there, but but it is that place of no, you are you are a family. And the Fantastic Four always comes back to family of like, yeah. no, we're a family. Yeah. You are there while there are those 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 dark threads of 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 hubris in the character yeah it is his relationship to his to his family that really grounds yeah Wait, have they clarified what uh what Ooh. turn of reed they were talking about is it the uh, ultimate turn or a different I, uh, that's the one that i assume that they were talking about the ultimate i haven't turn seen was that but big. I, I, yeah, yeah like that's a whole i mean like that's a whole <laughs> that's a whole episode, <laughs> that's a whole episode. Uh, all right we do need it we do need to get into our topic oh, it is yes. time for the topic. it is time for the topic uh are you guys ready no Drum roll. Ba -ba 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 This comes from Undercover Goth. Hey! If you were a scientist villain, what would your evil plan be? <gasps> now, I, I would imagine that we have to define the also the outcome of our evil plan. I assume it would be to get one million dollars. <laughs> well, I, I think like you have to. De <laughs> Let's go ahead and start the clock. I'm gonna read it's, this again. Our yeah. topic for uh, today's Wednesday Club. Uh, from Undercover Goth, if you were a scientist villain, what would your evil plan be? Uh, so here's what I personally want you guys to give me. Mm. What's your evil plan and what is your goal? Wow. All right. So I'm, go I'm going to start. Okay. Because I've already got one. All right. I want to be a sorcerer. So This no, is not a science plan. No, I know. I know. But hear me out. Hear okay. me out. Hear me out. So in the same way that like if we created a time machine and we had a like a lighter or a computer or a car and we could go back in time to like prehistoric ages or whatever and be like fire, laser lights, flashlights and all this other stuff and like surprise people with technology. I want to be smart enough that in this day and age, I can create technology that appears like magic. You just want to live a lie? I, it wouldn't be a lie because it would be magic to you people because you're all sheep. You're all sheep, I say. And you would all, uh, you would all bow at my feet as I like just became the god of the earth. Bing. I love this. It's a wonderful plan because I know how we would take you down. No, the, no that, but that's like, not the that's not minute. the topic. No, uh, okay, fine. Well, you can, uh, <laughs> your, your plan could be to. I'm just saying, out. we're confronting you with the fact that you're living a lie and you can't handle it, and like. <laughs> And, and oh, I could handle it if I was a motherfucking sorcerer. No, and Brittany would be standing there being like, I can see through your illusion, and you'd be like, no, I, you have to... Uh, I've disappointed my wife! Yep, uh, okay. My one true love! Evil science plan. At 30, here you go. Or should I take it? Are you, if, you, if you already have one. Well, I personally, I'm always a big fan of freezing all the water on Earth so that people have to, like, actually do what I say if they want to drink any water. You're gonna water. ice nine the planet, I am you? going to, oh I, like, God. I'm just gonna completely, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna super freeze it ultra quickly. And I will, in like, then they just have to. I will have like the only access to the unfreezing capability, and then people will have to give me what I want, which includes. I think I want to just like use that as like just payment to get us. I just want to build a castle on Mars where I can oversee the Earth and make sure that everyone does my bidding. So you want to be able to get to Mars and watch? I want to be the Ice King of Mars. <laughs> uh, I love the Ice King of Mars. Okay, uh, science villain. Uh, I guess, uh, uh, science villainy, I, you will all be uh, slaves of the ultimate like Library of Alexandria in space. Um, uh, okay. you, you will be retasked to research uh, and you will like contribute, like you're basically, everyone in the universe is going to be editing the collective Wikipedia of human knowledge. Uh, and it would probably have to involve some kind of mind control, right? Like to get everybody I'm pretty down board. with this so far actually. Uh, I'm like, I'm and, like, okay. Uh, it, I mean, you know, don't think the plan through because it w won't work. But like, for it'll be like a brief false enlightenment of the of the planet in service of this goal but, until someone has to like blow it up and restore freedom. But are you going to like give people misinformation so that, like, like they're all going one way and then you're implementing some other no, evil? No, their mission plan? is really human, like in, increase brainiac. human knowledge. But like, oh, you're going, but you're the pinnacle. But of I get the to have all of it, obviously. So you're like Brainiac or like Lieutenant Barclay from Next Generation, yeah. where you're just like in the the holodeck, was, where you just really like getting way, way further into Brainiac. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like you would subjugate the entire planet 
to give you all of their knowledge. Sure. So yeah. Or like the Riddler. We can all have and him, but Batman I forever. Get it. So so yeah. you're you're some some weird. Uh, uh, I want to be a sorcerer. Techno sorcerer. Don't huckster. you get it? Like so, so you're a techno sorcerer huckster. You're basically yeah. you're basically Mesmero. Yeah, I, I show up and I'm like, I am the only person in the world that has magic bow at my feet. You're, and then my technology is so good, everyone's like, he's actually a sorcerer. It's smoking a fishbowl, dude. It's smoking a fishbowl. Dude, fish I am not Mysterio. You are I'm so what? Mysterio. You're yeah, no, no, because, yeah. no, because I would actually have the effects. Like, it'd be like calling down lightning. I would actually shoot things with lightning. Like, it's or like freezer. not any less fake because it's impressive. No, but it would be you actual lightning. A man. It, would, it would be actual lightning, not like Mysterio's like, ew. You the would know it wasn't magic. No, I wouldn't you know. Would I wouldn't care. Know. Everyone's like, oh, he's like God. Oh, the Wizard of Oz, and he's, we have Brainiac, basically. I would accidentally invent the Borg. You would. Because I would be like, oh, cool, yes, let's all share all of our knowledge. And, and then it would just get And we'd stop making people. history because we'd be busy recording it. So that would be like, and, the then end. and you, you would just have farm animals exploding because your stupid ice would be out of control. That would be amazing. Ah. Why are farm animals exploding? I feel like if, uh, okay, if you freeze all the water in someone's body, what would happen? Well, I'm not freezing in I their don't body, know. and they can wear skates to get around. It'll be okay. He, are I you just freezing through. the oceans, or? Oh, the oceans, the lakes, just, just, the, just the available just, planetary water. So no one can drink water unless they come to you? Nope, they have to come to me if they so want to So you want water. to control resources? Yeah, I've, it's, all I've, it's basically. Utility all right. king. Utility king. All right. Sure. Uh, on Mars. And that where where can people find us? That wraps us up for our five minutes of what we would do with our science villainy. Thank you for watching Wednesday Club. I'm Amy Dallin. This is Talis and Jaffe. This is the Matt Key. Uh, you can find us Wednesday nights on Geek and Sundry. Bow down before our power. Yeah. <laughs> Bow down before the Sorcerer King. <laughs> I just want to be a sorcerer. Don't take that away from me, guys. Solar babies. It's basically solar babies. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that awesome topic, Undercover God. <laughs> Well done. Well, well done. Amy oh. is the new uh, board queen, according to Toonies On. <laughs> I just want to see art of you. Neji Blue says it's actual lightning. Craniac. Science is magic. <laughs> uh, we'll, <laughs> Mackie, we'll, we'll be how does he work? <laughs> Uh, P. P. Skinner says Matt's plan is actually what all the people on the Bible did when they came from their spaceships. Yep, yep, that's true. <laughs> that's true. There's actually there's a book about that. Yeah, the book of Genesis. Vox, no, no, Vox, no, no. There's a comic book. <laughs> Although there's a there's that comic book too. No, there, was it Pax Romana? Pax, Pax, Pax Romana. Pax that's Romana? also a Jonathan Hickman book. That's also it's, I it's haven't the heard one that where one yet, but. it's the one where like like the Vatican invents a time machine and then goes back and and conquers the Roman Empire. We go like back. I haven't in time. read that one yet. Oh, oh, wow. But that it's does nuts. remind me of. All that right, does Hickmania. Re- here we come. <laughs> yeah, we've got to do a Hick. Do not do a Hickman show next week. Hickmania. Do not. It's all. X Men and Doctor Strange and Hickman. So, oh, Amy! So next week we're going to be out in the desert, yeah, we'll in the and you're going to be desert. running be... a show with, yeah. with whoever you decide is your uh, <laughs> your, uh, your compatriots. Stay the... tuned as I firm up the plans for that photo. And that'll be. And then I think when we come back, do we want to do? I was kind of thinking it might be fun to do like a post-apocalyptic show because we're both going to be. We're like, going to be coming back from the desert. We're both going to be coming back, rocking slowly back and forth. Yeah. And our, our camp's name is uh, Post Nuclear. Post Nuclear. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh-huh. that makes sense. It has a good meaning. Actually. Yeah, no, it's good. Does it's good. It? It, 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 it does. We'll get, we get into, yeah, we'll get into it, it later. It's, it's, it's actually a very sweet, wonderful meaning. We'll mm-hmm. tell you after the show. Because okay. yeah. we don't have time. There's a raptor. It'll be great. Oh, yeah, we've got a Zolta we'll, raptor. We'll show her after. Well, yeah, we'll show you. Anyway. We'll show you. It's amazing. <laughs> anyway. It'll make you want to go. Thank you so much for watching. Send us more of your suggestions if we missed any of them because I love this topic. Yeah. Uh, Thank you to yeah. Ken Wynn for this beautiful, beautiful moon girl and double dinosaur. Oh my god, it's so wonderful. Uh, uh, and who are we and where can they find us? Uh, my name is Matt Key, at the Matt Key on um, Twitter, and Java Shambhala on Instagram whenever I decide to start using it. That's pretty cool. Thank you! I'm Enthusiamy on Twitter and Instagram. And where can they, and they can see you in like, just like an hour. Stay tuned. Ooh. I am back and we are picking back up with Shield of Tomorrow. It's going to be amazing. And I'm Talison Jaffe. I'm uh, Executive Goth. You can find me as Executive Goth everywhere it matters. And uh, as was once said by a very wise man, reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Enjoy your Wednesday. Nice.